Hi, welcome to episode 265 of Shane Plays Geek Talk. Thanks so much for pressing play. I am your host, Shane Stacks. Uh, always appreciate to have you along for the ride. So it, this episode is different in that I try to keep things light and fun on Shane Plays because there's enough drama out there going around and people are covering it. But but we recently had an episode in the uh, tabletop RPG hobby uh, precipitated, initiated, whatever, by Wizards of the Coast and uh, through proxy, at least, their parent company, Hasbro, that really affected a lot of the industry uh, in a very negative way. So in, in, with this episode, instead of trying to get into super in-depth coverage that has already been done so well by other people. I reached out to some third-party RPG publishers to get their perspective on how this affected them and how they were moving forward. And my guests get really honest and in some cases personal on how it affected them and as this all unfolded. So we got participants from three different levels within the third party publisher arena, if you will, that all interact with the, there's, there's a thing called the OGL. We'll talk about a lot in this episode. If you don't know what an OGL is in an SRD, the real quick definitions, all you really need to know for the purposes of this episode is the OGL is the open gaming license. It's something Wizards of the Coast did about a little over 20 years ago, and it allows people to publish uh, basically, Wizards of the Coast D and D rules and mechanics and whatnot, as long as they use this license, uh, and it's been a very friendly situation for two decades now. And there's also a thing called an SRD, which is a Systems Reference Document, which is a list of like rules, character classes, spells, uh, skill things like monsters with the lore, with the IP scrubbed off and the, the OGL and the SRD work together. That's all you really need to know. You don't need to have super in-depth uh, understanding of, of that to, to move forward. So, but if you've heard OGL a lot recently, you're, you're going to hear more about it in this episode. So one other thing there, I, in, I always put the, sh the show notes for any show at shameplays.com, but I definitely recommend you go to shameplays.com, look for the show notes for this episode because there's a ton of links in there to articles and other things that we will touch on during this discussion. Uh, last but not least, uh, you're going to hear legal aspects of publishing and the OGL and the SRD uh, during this discussion. And none of this is my show is not legal advice. If you're involved in publishing or want to get involved in publishing and you want to intersect with the OGL or the SRD or any of that, any other legal stuff in any way, you need to have your own legal resources um, to to talk with and consult with. So don't don't use this podcast as that. I mean, I think there's some good discussion in here, but this is not a legal consultation or, or anything like that. It's a discussion that happens to involve some legal elements. Also, want to give a... Uh, Reminder, shout out, etc. For the the last episode um, that we had here on Shame Plays was Osric and the OSR with Alan T. Groey Jr. and that was a great episode. Also had some discussion of Greyhawk and some other stuff in there. So go check that one out if you missed it. But with no further ado, on with the show. Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for pressing play. This week, you know, I, I, I generally, there's a lot of drama and chaos out there in my various interests. You know, I, I cover a lot of stuff, uh, not just games. I cover, you know, comic books, movies, anything that I feel is geeky. And, there, and there's enough drama to go around in all of those spaces. And I usually don't cover it because I want, you know, Hey, let's just have some fun. Uh, but every now and then something comes along that I think deserves a very special episode of shame plays. Uh, if you remember those in the, in the eighties, maybe the nineties, the sitcoms would have a very special episode where they would top, they would tackle a difficult subject. And, and so 
unless you've been living under a rock or just came out of a coma or were on the moon or something like that, you probably at least caught wind in some fashion of the recent, I don't even, drama is, in my opinion, too small of a word, uh, a kerfluffle, a debacle, a sure. corporate, <laughs> yeah, a, apocalyptic power move by a corporation. Uh, one of my guests, uh, who I'll introduce here in a moment, describes it to me as it was an existential threat to them. So uh, we're talking, of course, about Wizards of the Coast, uh, who is owned by Hasbro. And they are the company, the entity that owns Dungeons and Dragons and have been since, what, about 2000? They bought it from TSR, somewhere around in there. Like 90s, 2000. Yeah. Was it 2000? Um, 2000. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then they did a power move that really blew up more than I think they expected. And and so my guest today, uh, I've got three guests that are involved with the tabletop RPG industry in, in various fashions. And, and I love what these guests represent. I have a guest that uh is with a is with Frog God Games. Uh that's Zach. Is it is it Glazer or Glazar? I always say Glazer. It's Glazer. It's Glazer. Glazer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, got it. All right. So um, he's with Frog God Games. And Frog God Games is a major publisher in the TTRPG industry uh, of of their own stuff, third-party modules, that sort of thing. And so his entire existence, his financial existence, depends on his ability to to publish and, and Frog God Games' ability to publish, which is why he describes this to me as an existential threat in his past month that he's gone through, I'm sure has been very exhausting. Then we have Bill Barsh from Pace Setter Games. Hi, Bill. How you doing? And I, let me correct myself. Watsy bought TSR in 97. I've already got OGL in the mind. The OGL started in 2000. So 2000. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but it's been a while. It's, it's been a while. It, part of me is like, oh, this just happened, right? Because I've been in the yeah. hobby since like the 80s. But no, it's it's been a while. Um, and so Bill is with Paysetter Games, and Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I understand right, uh, you enjoy publishing games, but it's not your life. It's not your personal livelihood, right? It's it's not so much. No, I uh, I actually just retired from my real life job. Um, right. I'm still a shareholder in a, a large construction firm, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's not. Uh, but that said, it's uh, you know when I started, it was more of a hobby business, and now it's uh, it's it's definitely a lot more than that. Um, right. I mean, yeah, we've got employees in the whole nine yard now. Right. You obviously care. You're invested. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But for you personally, now you, I know your son's in the business with you. Correct. Uh, we, we give a shout out to Ben. Ben's a great guy. Um, and the, you've got employees and things like that. But for you personally, this wasn't an ex- existential threat, but it was still a major, like, what the heck are they doing? Absolutely. Uh, you know, and you know, we, we kind of pride ourselves at Pace Center of being part of a community, but we, like I said, we've grown a lot in the last four or five years. And, and while, uh, you know, if the worst of the worst would have happened, I, th- I still think we would have been fine. We, we had, we consulted people, I guess we'll get to all that, but we do employ a lot of people as uh, and most of them contract employees. Um, and their lives do depend on this industry. So it was significant. So for the people you work with, this was an existential threat. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Just the point I'm making is that all three of you represent a different intersection with the TT RPG history table or not history industry as far as how what recently happened directly impacted you personally, which I think is a strength for today's show because we get different perspectives. Um I mean, I'm guessing in the past month or so, there was a couple of times that Zach might have been huffing in a paper bag. I don't know, but I would have been pretty worried <laughs> if I was him. So, well, uh, and, of this. oh, sorry. It was, yeah. And I want to mention Zach, Zach and Bill, I've had plans to have both of you on the show uh, for other reasons. I was Zach, uh, of course, eventually we were going to talk about Frog God. Uh, but I wanted, uh, I was hoping to talk about retro computers and retro games, which is a big hobby of yours. Uh, so we're still eventually going to do that. And Bill, 
I had talked with you and Ben at the most recent North Texas RPG Con, and we've exchanged a couple of messages since then about having you on to talk about Pace Setter and your BX product and you know your third party modules and and things like that. Sure. Uh, so those are still going to happen. All right. Uh, but this kind of speeded getting you up on the show to, you know, to get this, this panel, this round table, if you will. And then finally we have Levi Combs from planet X games. Hey there. Hey, it's Levi also known as infra Combs <laughs> because he can, he can transform himself to a giant robot and fight Kaiju. Uh, so, uh, at Levi, you were planet X games. Now people, Listeners will remember you came on not that long ago and we had a fun, fun episode about Grindhouse Cinema and you talked a little bit about Planet X games. Uh, but to, to give it, how do you intersect with the with the industry? What it, what it, What is your role, the kind of stuff you publish? Well, it's on a, a, a couple of different levels. Um, the first being that, is that I, I don't have a game system of my own. Right. So um, really the entire livelihood is modeled around making products for other games. Um, so I'll make adventure modules or zines or um, like just basically support material uh, when it, you know, really when it comes right down to it. So how did like, uh, and we're going to talk about the OGL here in a little bit, but not everything you designed for is supported was directly D and D. So how, how big of a threat was this to you personally when Watsi dropped their bomb about a month ago? Well, the OGL um, was in all but one of my products. So, okay. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty, so pretty, pretty, substantial. pretty substantial. Okay. So were you huffing in paper bags or I mean, what? Uh, no, I, I I feel like I had more. I mean, I don't have as much to lose as, as Zach and the, and frog God does, or, or, or really most of the, the bigger third party publishers. Um, I can always switch gears, but you know, it was more about watching what people that I respected in the, in the, uh, in the hobby were doing and waiting. It just trying to be, just trying to be as patient as I could to see where that was all going to go. Um, luckily this time it worked out in my favor. I just don't know, um, how it might go next time. So, right. That's, that's going to be a big part of the discussion is what, ha- what happens next time. So, uh, because corporate corporations, executives are always going to have uh, 20 years from now, somebody could get greedy again and do a weird power play because they see a potential revenue stream. And what people have to remember, I'm not defending Watsi. I'm not defending Hasbro, but it, when you're at that level, there are plenty of executives that with their entire job is to increase shareholder value every 90 days. So they're thinking of it, as numbers and spreadsheets and I've got to keep the board happy or the CEO happy or whatever, or the CEO of the company that owns us happy. Uh, so I need, I have to increase shareholder value and Hasbro Hasbro, unless I'm incredibly wrong is a publicly traded company. So uh, it's stuff like that, that drives these kind of things. So there's even, even though things resolved semi well this time after a massive usually a show of force from the community and the customer base doesn't have this much effect but this time it resulted in in practically a reversal of what they were doing so uh here's what i want to do because i didn't i didn't really give zach and uh bill a good chance to talk about their problem want, want them to give their elevator pitch on their project products and maybe upcoming projects uh and then we will um We will talk about what happened. We'll try to summarize what happened and then talk about where do we go from here? Where do you guys go from here? Where do your companies go from here? So, uh, and Levi, real quick, I know you have a Kickstarter right now, Dungeon Malarkey. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dungeon Malarkey. It's the best kind of malarkey. It just looks like a fun, it's almost like a big zine. It's almost like a thick zine of just cool stuff, right? Yeah, well, it, it is a zine, um, okay. and it's uh, yeah, it, 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 that's exactly it. It's um, kind of like what does biodiversity look like in the weird fantasy TTRPG space? You know, you've got spell components and crazy monsters, and there's uh, bizarre plants and just kind of out offbeat uh, sort of uh, environments. A lot of stuff that you can add that isn't just going to be the same. Like, hey, here's a prestige class, here's a spell. It's more of like uh, the kind of the fringe sort of uh, the stranger things that you could add to your, your campaign rather than kind of the core stuff you normally see. Okay. 
So, and like one example, I was looking at your Kickstarter and there's a, um, a Modron that's can, you know, Modrons are, are creatures that are just pure beings of, of law and order. Um, and, and, uh, it got corrupted. It got tormented until it kind of broke. <laughs> now it's like a <laughs> yeah. chaotic messed up Modron kind of thing. So that's, that's the kind of thing you can expect to find in dungeon malarkey, the best kind of malarkey. Okay. So I'm going to circle back to Zach. Then we'll get to bill. Zach, tell us real quick. What, what does frog God do? And what do you do there? Uh, frog God, we primarily are known for making adventures and supplement books for whatever the current flavor, the larger Product. Like we have usually, we will support it. Like for a while, we did Pathfinder one. Now we do uh, fifth edition D anD. d We also have been supporting an OSR type product since uh, 2012, and right now we're supporting um, old school essentials. And we also make books for castles and crusades. And we'll be making books for the Black Flag system coming up this spring. Um, we have been in business in one form or another since the very first day they had an open gaming license. Mm. I have been here since 2015, and I'm currently the uh, COO, so I'm the second largest shareholder, shareholder holder, and the day-to-day manager of operations at Frog God. And that yeah, so the, the day that the news broke, I'm sure, was a very fun day for that you. That was the day my well-being died. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, um, Bill. I, what, uh, I, was, I woke up, and I got, uh, I don't know, most everybody probably here has heard of Eric Tenkar. Um, yeah, I got yeah, the, 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 yeah. He he does like almost a daily podcast covering. Yeah, he does all. He, he talks and talks and talks. God bless him. Yeah. Um, I don't know how he does that much talking, but anyway, um, he sent me a message like, "What are you going to do with the OGL?" And I'm like thinking to myself, like, what "I don't are you even talking know, about." Yeah, what? cannot be a good way to start my day. <laughs> and uh, that was, I was on the phone with somebody that uh, I don't want to name too many insider type names, but with somebody who told me um, on the 4th of January, I was told that, uh, which is the day after my anniversary, because uh, my birthday is the second, my anniversary is the third. The fourth, I get a, fo- a phone call from somebody saying they're going to make an announcement about the OGL, but you're going to be fine because they're not going to remove 1.0A. I'm like, well, great. Well, no, that wasn't true. Um, not because he was lying to me, but because they weren't telling him the truth in his locker. Right. He was passing the truth as he knew it to you. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. But, uh, well, the truth is he knew it versus the truth of what came out from Wansley were two different things. And like I said, uh, my sense of well-being indeed died because we pay about, I think, 44 people last year. So we paid in PayPal for various in various capacities. And almost all of them rely on the money, not as a full-time job like me or my boss, but uh, – and it's like, this is how they pay their car payment. Mm-hmm. We've been doing this now, you know, 23 years. So we were, had an expectation from Wizards of the Coast that that wouldn't change. Because you don't get to fix a contract 23 years into it. And, uh, you know, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bankrupt you because I feel like it. But right. they're big enough where they probably could if they tried. Yeah, and just real quick for the, for the listeners, we will get into more explanation. of if, you, if, if 1.0 and OGL doesn't mean anything to you, we will... We will experience Basically, the license they gave me, yeah. the license they gave us to do to do what we've been doing for twenty years, they tried to take away, and with that was m- not just my income, but the kind of income for the forty people we pay that pays their car payments, pays their you know their their kids' uh, daycare, right? Well, and that touches on a point that Bill made. Like, even if somebody maybe isn't directly going to have the bottom fall out from under them, they're connected to people who would. So yes. they still they still feel it very, very strongly. Yeah. And, and the way we have it said at Frog God, the last two people getting paid are me and Bill, right? So I knew this was going to affect me, but I was like, you know, Bill, I, I'm old enough where I can cruise through it. But like some of the kids that work for us that are, I say kids, but they're 23, 24. Right. You know, and some, one of them just got married, right? Yeah, right. And there are other people, you know, who they work real hard for us that, you know, we have an obligation to these people to make sure that we're fighting this and, so the first place I go after I wake up and have my whole sense of well-being died was to call my lawyer. Well, that started a long month. And it was every day I was on the phone with attorneys and with people at other big companies. Um, I was in a, a meeting with uh, Cobalt Press and Paizo and various places where we all were just flabbergasted first. And then we were horrified. And then we were, it was like basically going through all the steps to grief. But like we left the grief part off and we had anger and fear, right? Um, 
it, it was not easy. And I, I'm not going to overly you know state this. I can go through all kinds of things that happened. Yeah, you've not had a good month. Um, I mean, yeah. you you've got a good sense of humor, and you've maintained your sense of humor at least online. You know, yeah, so online. I know you were you were curled up fetal. <laughs> Maybe you're curled up fetal offline and, you know, your lovely wife was. Uh, no, but it was scary. stressful. Yeah. Look, um, I imagine. I, yeah, I, I can only imagine. I'll, just sum up, I'll sum up this way. I didn't wake up January 1st thinking 2023 was going to be the year I needed to sue Hasbro. Right. Um, yeah. And that's where I was looking for a while. And it was serious. And we still are serious. If anything happens, I don't think they would now. But I didn't think they would in the first place. Well, all you, need, all you need is a regime change or regime change at Hasbro well, or... Uh, and we'll get into the solution later. What they did was did the best they could with the horrible situation that they created. Um, they made it all right. But, uh, you know, you can, I'm sure Bill can tell you right now how it affected him when he first heard the news. And him, I bet it's very similar. Yeah, uh, I want to get into that. Uh, and thank you for being so personal. And this is what I'm wanting to get into is that everybody, you know, is angry at Watsy, but I, you know... And I've heard a lot of response from creators like, well, here's what we're going to have to do. Here's what we're going to have to do. But I haven't, I want to get to people how this personally affected people, you know, and, and it's, so thank you for being so personal about that. Now, uh, so Bill, real quick, give us a, a elevator pitch on Pace Setter. And then if you want, you know, kind of share what, you know, your how you heard about this and what your first reactions were. Yeah. Sure. It's a, a very similar to Zach, honestly. Um, so Paysetter has been around. We started in 2008. Um, uh, and we're, we've been publishing third-party stuff for mostly D&D for the entire time. So at, at right now, just to round it off, we got about 100 unique products. And by unique, I mean just there's not different versions. Like, you know, some of our products are 5e, BX, you know, Swords and Wizardry, you know, for the same Adventure book, let's say. But we've got about 100 unique ones. 99 of those use 1.10A, okay? Or 1.0A. Right, which uh, is the OGL, OGL, the original. Yes. Yep. Uh, I think all we have, we have literally one product that doesn't. So okay. the, the news was, uh, was, uh, was astounding, to say the least. And I, I'm kind of in the same world as Zach that uh, I'll be super fast. So we launched uh, the BX RPG about, oh, I think about four or five years ago now, which is just a retro clone of BX, uh, right before OSE went uh, nuclear, and right. which is awesome. It's just all great for the hobby. But uh, and, and we did it more out of a, we love the we just love BX and wanted a, a player's guide and separate dungeon guide for, for people to play the game. Um, not that we wanted to create a whole new system for everyone to use, but it, it's, it's done pretty well. And we, we have a, and a good, let me just there. step in for a second to make sure people, we're yeah. not talking about the BX from TSR back in what people were we're talking of a retro. Clone, right. We're talking of a retro, right. It's a, it's a clone of the old BX system. Just okay. like OSC is called like, BX. Yes. We, we, we actually, we actually call it the BX RPG. So, and we, so where I'm getting at with that is that, um, we were in contact with Watts Legal when we launched that Kickstarter. Um, and I, I can tell you right now, it was a great, it was, it was great. They were, they were supportive. They, you know, just made sure we were, we were within the guidelines they wanted. We made sure we could get what we wanted out of it, um, without just going in blind. And, uh, so we, we made some friends and, and know people there. And I, I know people who work for Watts, not as well as some others and not, probably big hitters uh, so much, but we do know people. So I got wind of this, the the day it hit, um, I woke up to an email saying, hey, you know, just exciting news. There's a, the new OGL is getting announced today. <laughs> so exciting. it wasn't so exciting. That was not the yeah. word I would have chose. Oh, it was exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was exciting. <laughs> May you live in interesting times, isn't it? Right. That? And yeah. uh, wow. so, you know, it, it came out and, and, you know, we we kept our public statement pretty straightforward. I mean, we did write one up, and we just said uh, basically, Paysetter is going to continue operating what we've always continued, and if that means we get in conflict with with Wizards of the Coast, we do. And uh, but that that was just our that was it for us. We weren't going to virtue signal anything else or 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 do anything else, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. That was just our. We're going to let's see how this all plays out, and. Uh, and my bigger interest has always been in a couple of other podcasts and social media things I've been on is 
is where did this all come from? Because it uh, it's not where we all think it came from. I'll, I'm, I've been in the corporate world my whole life with a, a very, very, very large construction corporation that has multiple um, subsidiaries. Um, so we do a lot with, believe it or not, a lot with contracts and uh, and these kind of things and licenses. So there's there's just a lot of bizarre involved in this whole thing. Uh, once you get past the shock value, when it hit us, um, but it did hit us. It would have hit us hard. I mean, if they just would have canceled 108, I mean, like I said, 99 out of 100 of our products would have went the way of the dinosaur for the most part. Although, I, again, I we would have contested that. Um, but that didn't that didn't make you feel any better at the time. I, I can tell you that because nobody wanted. No one, like Zach said, nobody woke up that day and said, "I want to deal with this in 2023." We got enough stuff going on. I mean, we're. We were we were just we were literally we held it off now for a couple of weeks and now it's launching I think uh, in another two weeks we've got a, a, a large five E Kickstarter that we spent two years developing that was done ready to go that would have launched in mid January and now we're launching it in mid February and it, now we're actually pushed it back because we didn't want to launch it on freaking Valentine's Day. You can launch it on Valentine's Day and call it "Show Some Love to Pay Setter Games." Oh, the, the, plenty of people do. I, I thank you for saying that. And we we have a. Uh, I'll tell you what. Our our. I don't even like call them our customer base. We just we just call them our pace setter family. Has been uh, extremely supportive. Cool. Uh, all right. So, and and Levi, uh, you've kind of uh, with Planet X Games. You've kind of, uh, you know, given us an idea of the kind of stuff you publish and everything, but. You know, how did this personally hit you on the head? Like, what were you like, oh, that kind of sucks? Or were you like, oh, this is, oh, oh, my goodness. He pointed at me and Bill, and he laughed. That's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, look, it's alarming. Um, you know, when you first hear about it, you have to go in and read and, and, and figure out uh, exactly, trying to figure out where all this is coming from to begin with. But then, B, how is it going to affect you? And, uh, you know, the... The first news of that was it was going to be pretty bad, you know, for third party publishers. Um, so, you know, immediately I'm scrambling to try to think like, all right, well, if I'm not doing if I'm not doing Dungeons and Dragons anymore, then what am I doing? Um, but I did take a, a, a kind of a wait and see approach. But it was it was nervous. It was nerve wracking because, you know, this is um, this isn't how I make all my money. But this is certainly how, you know, where some of it comes from. So. Um, and like, much like Zach, you know, uh, but, but smaller and bill, I, 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 I pay a lot of, of artists and, uh, collaborators and, um, editors and, you know, all the, all the stuff that goes into a book, yep. you know, um, proofreaders, the whole, the whole nine yards. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it just starts to, to mount up, you know, where, where is this going? How many people is this going to put out of work? Where do I have to start cutting corners and costs and, um, it isn't just about me. Like who's who else is it going to uh, is going to affect my little you know circle of of collaborators and creators? Oh, and by the way, they decided to drop this bomb in the middle of a recession. So <laughs> yes, and well, like, and, and like rec- I don't know if it's record inflation, but it's high inflation. Yeah, the, like, yeah despite despite the fact that's the case, people came through f- uh, fans and friends and other kind. Con- it, it was an amazing. Shift like right now we have a humble bundle because that company came through for us to make sure that small publishers. Yeah, I saw that. I shared that out. I saw that a lot of people got humble bundle or the humble bundle out. Bundle of holding got alternatives to D and D out. There was a lot of that kind of thing going on. No, and that's been amazing. And I don't think without that kind of support from our our industry, like industry customers and fans and fellow travelers, that without that support, it would have been a longer month. That's for sure. Well, there's. There's no doubt, Zach. I mean, we've been a part of Zach, you know, or Frog God usually invites us in with their their OSR Humble Bundles or 5e ones. And and this one is, I know Kabold's involved in it too. I mean, this, this one's on you know, the stratosphere. I mean, it's just, it just shows the support out there. Yeah. So I have a vested interest in the hobby because I've been playing in it, you know, since the mid 80s, early to mid 80s. I know a lot of people in the hobby. Uh, I've done a, a little bit of work. I've got a couple of credits with, you know, uh, RPGs and the RPG that I have my main credit with uses the OGL, um, the level up 
advanced fifth edition. Um, so when I'll, I'll tell you, I I wasn't as surprised as I could have been. And I'll tell you why, because, you know, with every earthquake, there's a, there's minor tremors, right? The signal an earthquake is coming. And in December, Cynthia Williams, who's the, um, now I didn't think that the earthquake would look like this. I mean, it was way above and beyond anything I could have conceivably expected, even from a corporation. But, but in early, sometime in December, about a month before this happened, the CEO, Cynthia Williams, who's been the CEO of WotC since uh, Wizards of the Coast, uh, affectionately, not, not affectionately known, now called Wizbro by me, because um, I never want to forget that they're owned by a, by a huge corporation. Um, Cynthia Williams, early December, she's been a uh, CEO since February of 2022. She said, the hobby, D and D, et cetera, is under monetized compared to video games. She shared that in an investor meeting. And that was like, okay, there's some crappy stuff coming. I knew when I saw that, that there was some greed coming. Uh, because what that really means is, is they want recurring revenues like video games give. She even, there's a quote from, there's an article I put at shameplays.com. Uh, folks, you can go to shameplays.com, find the show notes for this episode. And I'll have all kinds of links from the past month or so to help you research this yourself if you're curious. But she said she wants the type of recurrent spending you see in digital games. No, I, we absolutely believe that too, of going back actually a little bit further because we figured 6E was going to close us off. We just figured that they were going to do this. And look, they have, I've never seen them actually do it. But they have the, their technology there is the ability to make D&D super awesome with all kinds of stuff, including things I care about, like VR, right? All kinds of things can happen. However, um, they made it much harder for them to happen now. I mean, this didn't go the way they expected it to either. And I'm not even sure that the upper, upper management even really knew how this was going to go down. You're exactly right, Zach. You're you're a thousand percent right on, on most of this. So those, there's, a, there's a couple things. Shane, I, I just my two cents here. One, I, I don't disagree with with Cynthia ones that D and D is under monetized. I'm absolutely convinced it is. I'm sure it is. They know it is. Um, the other part uh, is that that doesn't mean she walked five levels down in the building and told people to do this. That's that's not how this came about. This was an executive management. This probably wasn't even upper levels of management where all this came from. Uh, this came from somewhere else, lower on the totem pole and there, I, I, I don't have a specific source I could tell you for sure, but I, I just know how corporations work and what, how they do work. Um, I should say, or, or don't work is how they resolved all this with that kind of speed. That is something that shows you that upper level management stepped in and basically gave them a, what the heck moment and they corrected. Um, and there, there are going to be people walking out of Watsi in the next few months with their bags packed. Uh, this, this, this was a monumental public relations nightmare that was put into place by people with most likely agendas and most likely did not run this far enough, far enough up the flagpole. Um, either that or there's a combination of just simply uh, no due diligence involved. Uh, this isn't how corporations operate, especially the way they ended it to the survey and in the survey early, kicking everything else in the creative commons. This is just not how things work. So, you know, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of tar easy targets here for people to look at. Uh, and we're not going to hear exactly what happened for a while, but we will at some point. But this, this was not Cynthia Williams or the president of Hasbro coming down saying, hey, you got to screw over third party publishers. That that didn't happen, that, and I'm, I don't. I'm not going to sound like I might. I don't even want to sound like a Watsi defender because I'm not. Because this thing is a nightmare. Uh, but that, that's not how this went down. Context means a lot, um, and I think most of us, and Zach included, and Levi included, we want to know where this came from because we want to make sure this never happens again. Because they, as Zach alluded to earlier, we've been using this thing for 15, almost 16 years. Now. 23 years, exactly. With with every 
we had lawyers look at it before we ever used it. This was not anything that was. I don't. First of all, I don't think they could actually authorize it. it in the first place. It would. I, I think they would lose, and they're, they're not going to fight that battle because um, they don't want to. They don't want to take the chance that they would lose because that creates a lot of problems for them. Um, but you know, that's that's what they tried to do, obviously. But um, I do agree with with the one D and D coming around the corner. There, it's a whole different avenue of monetization. And it's also it, it's not going to have an OGL or SRD that we're used to. And I, I don't really care because we probably won't. Right. Yeah. They're going, it. they're going to move more to a model. Well, sure. They, 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 I already know they've spent a couple hundred million dollars on their, um, their virtual tabletop stuff. So uh, they're moving in that direction. And I can't speak a lot to that because that's not my specialty. I'm sure Zach knows way more about VTTs than I do. I, I, I don't, um, I, you know, we, we're, we have a, Pace that are is involved with it, but Ben handles all that. I, I'm not smart enough to deal with it. I think, look, you know, on the outside looking in, all legal considerations aside, they're trying to move to what's called a vertical stack, where you own everything. Uh, that means that you know, you any digital stuff is happening on D and D Beyond. You're using their, you're using their virtual tabletop. You're using all of their resources, and they own it all. Um, and there are there are plenty of companies that have made a successful business model out of that. For example, Apple. Apple is is a closed system. They're they're very much a vertical stack in a lot of ways. Where they're not a vertical stack is they don't manufacture their own hardware. But when it comes to software, yeah, but they won't let you even even fix your own phone. I mean, right? So, yeah. Exactly. You no, know, yeah. it becomes hard. My theory in all this, honestly, this is this to me the, the closest um, example. Of this is from. Uh, the 1200s, right? Um, when when the king, uh, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury was opposed to the king in England, right? Before the Magna Carta was signed, the king's like, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? And three people decided that I'm going to do what they said and make sure I'm the one who rids them of this troublesome priest. And then we'll be famous or popular or important. But no, he didn't mean murder them in the middle of the church, right? I think somebody right. has what said, third party publishers are a real pain in the ass. I wish who could rid me of these or why can't, why is this OGL exist? Because this is dumb um, for us in the long run. And they fixed it by trying to ice out every third party developer ever. We weren't even opposed to paying the royalties at all. What we're opposed to is the fact that we did, we weren't sure we'd be able to sell the books we have in our 40,000 foot warehouse. Right. Yeah, um, and so exactly. somebody made this decision, not caring about us. And we have our own theories about where it came from too. And we were certain it did not come to the business side because not only they have a movie coming out, I have a toaster that says D&D on it, okay? I have a waffle yeah. iron that says D&D on it. They were threatening a lifestyle brand that was self-sustaining, right? That's why I never thought they would do it. That's why I was so surprised. Like, nobody could be this dumb. I told Bill Webb, my boss. Yes, they can. They can't be this stupid. <laughs> well, I was wrong. So, so, Zach, now that you let the cat out of the bag, I agree with you 100%. This this wasn't run by I, – I don't know who they ran all this by, Uh it certainly didn't run run it through outside counsel at all. This was clearly no, inside. Counsel. inside. Yeah. Uh, and if they ran it by any of their inside uh, PR people, it must have been people low on the totem pole. But I I agree. I do not think this came out of management side. I think this came definitely more so out. Of, I hate to say the creative side. Look, look. Let's look at context again. I keep bringing that word up. Watsi has not put out a creatively positive product in over two years. Yes, Almost. that's absolutely true. It's just not good. So who do you think they don't like? They don't like third-party publishers who are putting them to shame. I mean, there are a lot of high-quality, a lot of high-quality products coming out for 5e D&D. And I, I think the best stuff for 5e D&D, 5e D&D in the last three or four years, none of it's come out of Watsi. Yeah, I, I, you and I were talking about that, Bill, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about yeah. putting this together, that for the first few years of 5e, they were putting out some pretty strong stuff. Like, Absolutely, oh, yeah. this is badass. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And then, and I then agree. It's, uh, the last couple of, but let me let me back it up a little bit. Uh, I want to synthesize some stuff that Bill said, and then what Zach said, and then I want to get Levi's take on it as well, because um, he's got his. All three of you have your ear to the ground with the industry in ways that I don't. I think I agree with you, Bill, that Cynthia Williams or the executive management didn't dictate these individual steps. 
Um, I do think that they signaled, hey, we're not we're not getting the money we should out of this. And and I think that Cynthia Williams did lay out a vision plan or whatever you want to call it at the executive level, say, I want to work as towards recurring revenues, um, which 100%. is a business model that that doesn't really mesh with tabletop. They're basically saying, well, we want you to lease your tabletop gaming. But anyway, that's either here or there. But the rank and file or upper middle management or somebody then took that, say, well, we need to get more. She And I'm sure she put out a uh because a lot of what's happening here isn't just about money it's about controlling we want to control what dnd is so that we can move it to that vertical stack and so with those discussions somebody somewhere in the company made these moves based on what upper management was signaling that's what i believe well it gave them so shane it's more that they gave them a suit of armor so when they came down and said we need to monetize and control our product and our brand um Broadly speaking, because this is this is the this is our business model moving forward with D and D is we're going to probably shrink our marketplace, but we're going to grow our revenue. Um, look, there's nothing. A lot of companies have done that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what that did is that gave people down the totem pole suit of armor, saying, "Oh, really? Now I can use that as justification to do X, Y, and Z." And by right. the way, the reason that we're getting screwed is because of all these damn third party publisher guys. They're taking our yeah, third here. party publishers and is a is an easy target, right? Well, it's, it's these super guys. easy target. Yeah. It was easy. It's a deflection. It's, it's a deflection. Pizza. We don't make enough money combined as a uh, in the hobby to no. Involve. And I don't. I don't even think it's the. It, it's. I don't think it's the money at all. No, honestly, I, I think it's a deflection of of saying we're putting out inferior product. Let's get rid of these people who who we feel compete with our product. Um, right, making us look bad. Identity in our yeah. brand, and we're going to get rid of those people because we don't need them making us look bad. Because th- what people are worried about is someone getting their finger pointed and saying, hey, the reason our books aren't selling is because they're not very good. If, if, but if you can go out there and say, hey, our books aren't selling because the marketplace is too diluted, you know, not everyone's going to dig into those numbers, okay? And especially when you get higher up in in, in a business with – that Watsy owns where Dungeons and Dragons is a unique product. Okay. It's, it's not, we're not selling widgets, right? It's just, it's a very unique product. It's very niche as, as large as it is. It's still a niche. Well, right. Well, let me, Hey, I got to back. I'm going to back us up a little bit. I want Levi to, uh, but I, but I will say kind of on a, on a microscopic level compared to a macroscopic level, I think you're seeing some of this happen because D and D is becoming more of a lifestyle brand with more visibility on it. So let me well, let me give an example. Brand, the brand has to be protected, and right because it is growing, and they're attempting to expand that brand. Yeah, let me give you an example that I think is kind of a of a, a comparison. It won't be perfect, but years ago, uh, the U.S. Army released a free first person shooter called America's Army. Heck yeah, I remember it, that they, one. They use it as a recruiting tool, and it was really good. But nobody saw it coming. It came out of nowhere. So the team that developed it was left basically alone to develop it. So the first version was great. Then it got popular and executives and other people became aware of it. And people higher up in the military got a hold of it. And so they're, oh, now we've got a medal with this. And then the second version of it was terrible and it tanked. So I, I it's it's a loose analogy, but what I'm saying is, D and D is getting a lot higher visibility right now. Uh, the movies coming out, merchandising is going crazy. The '80s cartoon is getting more and more uh, love and and stuff. So, uh, so now it's getting more visibility from executives and stuff that that know nothing about really what D and D or the community is. But all right, so I'm gonna take it to Levi. Uh, Levi, what like do you have any pet theories or have you heard anything with your ear on the ground of where this came from inside Wizards? I mean, nothing that I can add that Bill hasn't already said. Um, I think that he is pretty on point with what he's saying. Um, and his, um, and you know, the, um, the, the assertions that he's making, I mean, the, the, very much so as a matter of fact, um, it just seems so ham handed. I mean, the it whole really thing, does. Yeah, just, yeah. It, I mean, for, for a, a, such a big company that's publicly traded and all, all this money 
it, it just seems like such a low level. Well, it seems like, amateur. Watch. Just it seems book. like amateur uh, eagerness. It is, was, it was, it, and that's a hundred percent right. And this is again, why I think I have some of the, some of the thoughts I have on this, but I can tell you where it's not amateur is when they, when, when they released 1.2 and said, we're putting out a survey. And then six days later, they shut they, it down. They run up the white flag and just say, okay, forget it. That's all gone. Here you go. Have the SRD. Um, we're putting it in Creative Commons. You don't even need to use ROGL, but we're going to keep that active. We're never touching it again. That was not, and and that was high level people at probably Watsy, maybe Hasbro. I I don't think That's Hasbro. Really called them, probably, yeah. probably, yeah. This is this. That's where you saw a complete, like I want to say, level change of activity right. happen. And the people that did not did that. We're definitely not the same people that launched this. Yeah, that wasn't amateurs, right? That was executives. Well, there was a, a particular bit of language in um, in their response when, when when everybody pushed did the initial pushback. Uh, there was a, a little bit of language there towards the end of their of their their PR statement where it says, "Hey, you know, it might look like people are going to be telling you that, that 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 they won, but hey, we won too." I That's can't, a, I, I, to this day, I can't believe they put that out. I mean, that is yeah. just like we all made a new friend today. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, like yeah. A, it's, it's a very amateur hour, just kind of just gross statement to make. Go go back and look at some of the language that was in 1.1. 1. 1. I, I can't believe anyone would think it, it was like a stream of thought in going into a license. It was unbelievable. That did not come out of. This is a good time. This is a good time to transition into let's let's look at the timeline of what happened and let's talk about because there are people out there that are going, what is this 1.0 and 1.1 and 1.2? So real quick, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to define uh OGL versus SRD. Yeah, good luck. OGL, yeah, good <laughs> luck, right? <laughs> well, what we're mainly talking right about today is what Wizards of the Coast tried to do with the open gaming license. So in 2000, I guess, um, they released uh, a document called the Open Gaming License that allowed people to basically use uh, parts of the game rules uh as long as in the product you publish the OGL with it. Now there, there's more legal aspects of it, but it was basically saying, Hey, you can write stuff for D and D or you can write stuff that for your own game that has elements of D and D in it. And as long as you follow these rules and publish this statement, this legal statement in your product, uh, then it's okay. All right. Fair enough. Anybody want to, I mean, does that? And they said they would take it away. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing. They said it's irrevocable. Uh, this is this. So if you, is it we can't you? We will never take this away from you. In fact, one of the architects, I can't remember Ryan Dancy. Ryan Dancy. Darcy. Ryan Dancy. So the yeah the other the other part of that is is they have public. You can find them today. They released FAQs and public statements about how the OGL was there to benefit the hobby and it, which, and the reason they were doing it because also would benefit Wizards of the Coast, which turns the license into a contract. Um, and since well, this gets into a whole other legal part, but yes, right. basically this, that's why that was our standpoint was this was thing was, it was never revocable to begin with. Yeah. And the, and um, the architect, or one of the architects said it was never meant to be revoked. Right. And then I, I, but anytime really you get lawyers, years, I'll, years, I'll, I'll go ahead. So, I mean, go ahead, Zach. I said we've invested over over a million dollars over the last twenty years, um, just in warehouses and in salaries and everything else because we believe them. Okay, so, <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, you had it in writing, right? We published it on our, every book we made. I mean, what is writing? I had literally to said it out loud. loud. Yep. All right. So one. So that was one point zero. Right. And then one point zero eight. There were entire companies. Uh, Paizo, Frog God, Troll Lord, others launched 
off of that, right? Uh, so, yeah. it, and, and it was intended to be irrevoc- irrevocable, irrevocable, however you say it. But when you get lawyers involved, I saw people out there argue. I saw so many legal opinions explode. They're all terrible. This, that I had people saying, well, irrevocable doesn't mean that they can't end it. And so I, I don't know. I, I knew it was all headed to court. Well, people yeah. were saying because irrevocable doesn't show up in the documents as perpetual. Perpetual does not mean irrevocable, which is true. But. <laughs> yeah, but perpetual is a pretty strong. There's, but anyway. There's the there's common sense and yeah, yeah there's common sense and then there's legal sense. So right. if things hadn't changed, this was going to court. Probably class action, but it was going to court. No, it it, it would be the opposite. A lot of people are saying that too, Shane. That's not yeah. how that would have worked. So. You don't think so? Yeah. How do you think it would have worked? Well, I can tell you exactly how it works. Okay, and only because I've seen it. So it it most likely you would not target Wizards of the Coast because um, no. Basically, they would have to bring suit telling you, you can't use it. So well, what would have happened is someone would have published under 1.0a and Wizards would have um, C&D. Would have come after them with a C&D and legal action. And that gives you the opportunity at that okay, point to, All right. to bring a case forward. So okay, uh, fair enough. Get, you, you can't really sue somebody for something that hasn't really happened. Just because they revoke 1.0a, unless you can prove that it's causing you damage... Um, which is you don't want to get into that that part. You want to put them on the defensive. That that's how that would have because they would have had to defend their claim. And instead of you, you know, it's the old uh, you don't want to argue in a, a negative or whatever it is. So and um, there are some that, parts of the OGL, and there are parts of the OGL that make it hard because you know one thing not in the OGL is jurisdiction. So Absolutely. every jurisdiction you can think of, you could when you get a C and D, you can apply and say. Hey, we think this contract is invalid. We'd like you to give us an injunction, right? So we want there are things that are there that provide us that provide opportunities for everybody. We don't have to do any of those things, right? But they knew it. I mean, so, the thing is, you, the lawyer has over fifteen hundred dollars an hour, right? So, yeah. I, I, I thought where Zach was going, the last thing Wizard wants to do is defend that in a area of the country. Let's call. It, let's just say. Put out. Let's say they have you. You get into a blue collar area of the country. They do not want to defend this in that arena. Okay. Right. Jurisdiction, as Jack says, or as Zach pointed out, this this is not a good thing for them. At all. Okay. So so let me ask this, and then I'm going to move us over to the, keep us going on the timeline and definitions. But let me ask you this, because I know there were a lot of people revving up that wanted to legally challenge. Uh, Wizards of the Coast over this. So say, so I had created a company called Shane Plays Games, and then I published something on one under the original OGL after they said that yes. this is superseded and no longer effective or whatever. And then Wizards sent me a C and D, and then I said, oh, I don't think so. We're going to court or whatever. At that point, could other companies say we want to be friends? Can't you be like? Friends of the brief or something you don't like want that. To, you don't want to hear all about this because yeah. your podcast will end and I'll still. Yeah, be everyone's going to start okay. drooling out of. Yeah, everyone's going to start drooling if we get into this. They they can file what's called an amicus brief. That's what I mean. Um, in yeah. support of in support of you. Um, I, I, honestly, I don't think it would have taken any of that. I mean, it'd be helpful, obviously, but th- this was a lose lose for them. Okay, yeah. and that's why the big boys stepped in and said, "Oh no, we're not doing this." And I know people are still saying, well, they never, they're never they not saying that 1.0a is, is not revocable. Well, they're not doing that because there's there's legal reasons for them to do that. But I'm telling you right now, as Zach pointed out, they have a movie coming up. They have one D&D coming up. They are not going to touch this with a 10-foot pole, to put it in D&D terms. Yeah. Probably in a very I, – I, I don't think they're ever going to try and revisit this path because this path was a nightmare for them. Yeah. And, the door. And, that's the only good thing. Yep. That's the only good thing, in my opinion, that came out of this, because there's probably people at Wizards or Hasbro that, that think sometimes, well, what if we could? And now they see what would happen if you try. But like I said, you could get a re- you could get a regime change another 20 years from now. Some of those people are going to get shown the door. Of course, anything could right, anything could happen yeah. 20 years from now. But I just right. don't I don't see them revisiting. Yeah, the near future. This is a, this is a loser for them. They're 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 moving on. I'm just telling you, I know how Again, I, I do know how big corporations work. Right. They do not want to spend one more minute talking about OGL. Okay, one point away. They just in my don't. mind. 
asked me about an OGL out of nowhere. I, I'm sorry, but they've reached the mainstream, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a good point. You had yeah. this made yeah. NPR. This made NPR. This made the American Bar Association was talking about it. They tweeted about it or something. I mean, this went. Uh, I, I got to tell you where where it was worse, Shane. Is this this made it to financial? Um, right. Yeah, the outlets. Motley Fool was talking about it. And, and I'm gonna tell you, their their yeah. stock didn't wasn't significantly affected by this. So right. That's not a thing. When people are making that correlation, their stock was affected because they announced a layoff of Hasbro announced a layoff of a thousand people, and they're not alone. Uh, Companies galore are dropping employees. So yeah, it's that, bad. That right was now. It. But this was not a good look for them, and this was not going to help out long term in any way, shape, or form. People talking boycott of the D and D movie is not helpful. Yeah, okay? it didn't help. Yeah, there were. What I'm saying is, is this like this broke out of our bubble, of our hobby bubble, and got out absolutely. in the mainstream. Yeah, I mean, when you got the Motley Fool, when you got the American Bar Association, when you got whatever talking about it, NPR talking about it, uh, that's that's hitting the mainstream. So I want to, so Levi, obviously I know Zach said he spent the last year or last month talking to lawyers. Um, and then Bill, whether he talked to lawyers or not, obviously has a very strong legal handle on I the did. dynamics of this. <laughs> I did. You did. You did talk to lawyers. Okay. So Levi, did you ever get to that point where you were, were you talking to a lawyer or, or were you really digging into the legal aspect or what, what, you know, what was your take on this Levi? Like, were you just like, well, I'm just going to move on, or I'm going to see what my legal options are, or what? Well, it definitely wasn't a uh, was not a, a position of I'm just going to move on. I just I put already put way too much into this right. into this to uh, to just throw it all away, um, or just hey, I'm going to just you know I'm, I'm going to change gears right now and do something completely different. So that was never an option. Um, it was just like I was faced basically with a with a the, the breakup of a of a long term girlfriend, you know. <laughs> like I have supported and loved Dungeons and Dragons since I was in my early early teens, and um, I've given them you know through f- basically six editions of of um, of stuff uh, over you know my ent- basically my almost my entire life. I've given them money. I've given them support. I've been there, been there with them when they weren't popular, when they were popular, and for them to kind of come along and do this, you know, it was just a, just going to be a bad breakup, you know. Um, so, so rather re- rather than going in and and immediately seeking, um, you know, seeking out a lawyer, it was more of a kind of a wait and see for me. Um, I was already kind of disgusted with the way the whole thing was going, and from what I was seeing. But I, I was really watching what, what honestly, what folks like like Bill and um, and Zach were doing. Um, right. I wanted to see what people who had been in the business longer than me, the positions that they were taking, and then eventually I would make a decision based on all the kind of all the data together. Um, again, my concern. I'm very small, you know. My my concerns are not as big as as either of them. So it's easier for me to say, all right, well, I can wait. But th- these guys, I mean, so yeah, they had, they, had to, they had to get out as far ahead of it as they could to see what Very the options so. were. Yeah, so. what was going on. Yeah. So for, for me, it was more of a more of a wait and see and then act. Zach, Zach, you guys had a Kickstarter in the middle of this, didn't you? Or right at the no. end, tailed out right at the end? Uh, uh, no, I uh, thank thank God we one we had one end of December. Um, no, but we were planning on one. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. And then we're also. I mean, we have lots of things happening, and it, we just launched a, a, a Indiegogo for a, a, some books that was put off almost a month. Uh, and all those things are revenue that you know. Yeah, we're we're doing great now in a whole bundle, but we, you know, current activity um, could have been just horrible because it takes you know, the, the, no one pays you the day it's ended, you know. And so, just the day to day operations, we didn't know even if we could be saved with the humble bundle back when we weren't sure what's happening because when the second. A, a, um, statement came out, right? Um, yeah. We didn't feel any better. We felt worse. Oh my frankly. goodness! Yeah. Okay. And, so let's let's get to that. Well, go ahead. Finish your statement. Let's no, get that's to fine. go ahead. Watch it. I'll go to the timeline. So I don't want to ruin your the, the flow. No, no, that's fine. I mean, I want you to have input. I'm just saying, you know, uh, it's bigger than just oh, they tried to take away the OGL. So uh, kind of circling back. Uh, so the OGL is basically a license that was perpetual, if not legally irrevocable, that um, that allowed you to to publish games 
using yeah, it's our permission slip. Right, your permission slip. And D and D, twenty years ago when it was a different world, put that out. And like yeah. like Bill said, there's facts you can find where they said, you know, you don't ever have to worry about this change us changing this. So so early January, was it was it January sixth? Yeah. I can't remember what day it was. Uh, I, think it was I think it was the fifth because the day my Hasbro toy showed up from Haslab. <laughs> you said that <laughs> and, and, uh, it was it was quite the day. Yeah, you were you normally get pleasure out of Hasbro toys showing up, but I do. I used to get great pleasure. That, I love collecting the weird yeah. ephemera for Dungeons and Dragons. Well, yeah, you were saying it was it was a weird feeling to get toys. Uh, yeah, open it up like I'm going to sue these people. Yeah, the company's <laughs> trying to put you out. The company's trying to put you out of business. So, yeah. yay, yay! It's like the Ranger, you know. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it takes it. It kind of takes the wind out of the sails. So you've got you got the OGL, the Open Gaming License, which the same one had been in place for twenty years. Then you got the SRD, which the SRD is is a list of like monsters, spells, things like that that you can use with the lore scrubbed off. So all you get is the game mechanics. Yeah, you, know, you can't like, use the holder basically. Right, you can't use, right. right. IP. right. They have IP that they keep aside. The, for some reason, the friends spell is not there. I don't know. Why? Yeah, there's it's there's not. a few spells, but you don't get any of the lore. Like even if they give you the stats for yeah, Cobalt, you the end skill for the lore. Yeah, the the lore of well, a Cobalt is a reptilian or a dog faced something that lives with dragons. Da, 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 da. You don't get that. You got to write that yourself. But you get so like, that, the, yeah. The the best way to look at it is that the the SRD gives you the abstract of the mechanics and basic Classic. functions of Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Classic, you, but you can't yeah. use any, you know, the important thing for most people to know who aren't, who don't publish this stuff is we can't use intellectual property. You um, can't use forgotten co- Anything copyrighted by TSR slash Wizards of the Coast, now Hasbro. So and that's fine, but, you know, people tend to mess around with that sometimes too much. Um, but you, uh, it, it's... And, and the OGL is the license to use that SRD um, to, to produce your products. And that's that's the crooks of the whole thing, is that was uh, basically they were taking an axe to that, um, which would have caused, like everyone said, pretty much Armageddon in the third-party publishing world. Which and the thing is they made their own Armageddon because they by taking the SRD, they put it into the Creative Commons as their as their fix. So that's why yes. how powerful the SRD is. And they lost that forever by putting it into the Creative Commons. Into the Creative Commons, which Correct. yeah, is, is basically There's some interesting aspects of that too that are gonna get talked about, by the way. Yeah. Because there's right. some they left some uh um the, some they didn't, they didn't scrub it clean before they let it go. They left, so they just sho- again, yeah. this all happened very quickly. Just shove it in, <laughs> and then there's copyrighted stuff. But shove it well, into the creative more, commons. That's how blank they were. It has all the hallmarks of yeah. The adult walked into the room and said, "We are done. Fix this. this yeah, fix now, this now. Yeah, yep. fix this." And they didn't so, care what happened because they are moving on to one D and D. Look, they're not. They're right. just not going to care. Well, and that that's the thing with me. My my take this whole time has been so what they did to tie in what I'm about to say is early January, Jan, let's call it January 5th. Um suddenly it leaked out that very soon there was an update to the OGL coming. It was going from one page to how many pages? Well, it was 18 or something. Yeah, it was going from a very it was going from a very simple, straightforward one-page license to one we like, can't pantomime. Yeah, there, to like eighteen or nineteen pages, something like that. Uh, it, it and they were saying that the original OGL, which people had been publishing under and had their entire livelihoods built around for twenty years, was was rescinded or whatever word they used. Can't use it anymore. Can't use it anymore. And oh, by the way, we're also putting language in. Uh, so if we subjectively feel that your product doesn't is, meet our standards, doesn't meet our standards, it's mean. It makes people feel uncomfortable or something. It made fun of Levi. You know, if it made fun of Levi, it was bad. And it, therefore, we're going to revoke it. So it was revocable. Even if they were to say it's not revocable, and it was revocable because they could do it for any reason they wanted. Right. Absolutely. So they basically were changing. 
Yeah, and also there were if you made over you had to report your revenues. If you made under if you made over a certain percentage, if you made over fifty thousand dollars on Dungeons and Dragons material, you had to report you had to report that to Wizards of the Coast. And then over seven seven hundred. Over seven fifty, you, you had to pay. The royalty, royalty came in after seven fifty. So fifty thousand dollars was their threshold for reporting. Seven fifty was their threshold for royalties. Right. Then they they were they were cracking down on VTTs and other stuff. Oh, and kind of stuff. Yeah, they were really cracking down on like VTTs. let's call it VTTs and then stuff influencers would do, like with videos sure. and stuff. They were well, cracking down. They're afraid of. Yeah, they were cracking down <laughs> all over the place. Uh and so this would this was what we'll call 1.1. 1. 1. In my opinion, well, they should have called it version two, but they called it 1.1. 1. 1. It was 1.1. It did come out January 5th because I just went and looked back when I got that email. And I got my email on January 4th. So and and oh by the way, you had seven days, right, to yeah. determine if you were going to sign it or not. According to the leaked document, you had seven days to sign it, which is ridiculous, right? right? And I can and, tell you, we we did not get one of those. We're not that big, so okay. You know, seven I, I days. Clear on that. Okay, so Levi. You, you're, you know, you're, you're a one man shop. You use some freelancers, right? You're, you're a family guy. You got kids. How, how, how do you feel about getting a new OGL that's goes from one to 18 pages and you got seven days to decide whether you're going to sign it or not? <laughs> well, hey man, I just bought a new house and, uh, <laughs> you know, I got, I got, uh, one kid in college and one, one, one kid just entering school and, um, so yeah, not not great, man. Um, I mean, even if you had a lawyer on staff or a retainer, seven days is not a great amount of time to have an, a lawyer to look over this and make a decision. On. No, no, obviously, man. But right. again, um, from the get go, it was also ham handed, and it just seemed like like professionals weren't writing it, you know. And then when that second, when that when that that, that press release came out, where they were kind of backing off. That, again, that language, that language they use, any, anybody could read that and go, you know, I don't, I don't think this has been vetted. Like this doesn't sound like a a measured corporate response. It sounds like well, it sounds like an author trying to sound like the Godfather trying to force you out of a business. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like somebody, yeah. a creative person who didn't know anything about the law, read about the law enough where they could go, well, we could bully them all out, and we'll say they didn't want to do what we offered them. We're well, we're, the, we're the heroes here. You know. 1.1. Oh, absolutely. 1.1 specific. When you read 1.1, you can, f- I, I could literally feel the animosity of that document. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it just was, it, it just came out of that thing. And I, like I said, immediately on January 5th, I said, again, it's just my, my background coming out of saying, where in the hell did this come from? And right. Not that I was a surprise factor, but of how does this walk out of a company like Wizards right. of the Coast? It just, it just, it's, this is, I mean, I hate to use this phrase, that's just not a thing. Okay? Yeah, well, I think it's Levi's nailed it when he's calling it ham handed or ham fisted. It's a very, oh, clumsy, it, was, it was aggressive. It was, yeah. it was yeah, no, ham handed makes it sound like a Benny Hill sketch. This was not that. This was a, no. Rep- to put me no. out of business. Well, it's, it's like what they were trying to do needed the finesse of a fencer and you know, when they needed finesse, they needed nuance. They needed to work with the community if they wanted to try to get this through. Instead, they ran out with a big sledgehammer and yeah. The problem with that Shane is th- th- this is something I have a, a, a larger problem with wizards of the coast with honestly. And I don't, like I said, I think they do a lot of great things. They do a lot of things that aren't great. Um, but the, the, a large problem wizards of the coast has, and, and this is just demonstrated now they have it at every level in that corporation as far as Dungeons & Dragons goes. They have no connection to their marketplace. No. They just don't. They took themselves out of it, out of the community years ago. They haven't attended Gen Con or an Origins in, I don't know, 7, 10 years. They, they don't get out there. They hire some sort of, what do they call it, community organizer. And all they do is talk to TikTokers or whatever. That's not the, I'm sorry, that's not the community. Yeah, it's that's very corporate approach. That's what I'm saying. They it's, don't understand. It's not even a corporate approach. I, I've never seen anything like this. It's I mean, a clinical. I mean, what I'm, I guess what I'm saying, I'll, I'll backtrack and scratch corporate off of it. What I'm saying is like I, my impression on this from the beginning is that somebody trying to implement a power move that has no 
connection or understanding how the community and Mart and fan base and their customers. power works for that matter. Hundred percent. It makes you feel like there's an office building in in where they rent in Washington, right? Full of Watsy employees who have this disdain for the people who play their products. Isn't they that just crazy? don't even yeah. care, and they don't even care about the people who who are out there to help them. I mean, that's what the third party publishing industry does. They grow the D and D brand, and they grow by everything it does. Which which benefits them. They don't. They not only do they not care about you. They're willing to throw you under the bus, and that's what this felt like. And to add on that, to add on that third party third party publishing doesn't just add on. I think more importantly, it keeps people in because if you've yes. gone through all their stuff, go. well, that's why they did right. the OGL because they wanted a strong hobby. Well, they they, they did the OGL because they had no money to actually make new books after they uh, bought. They couldn't new do anything on their own. Car, but still, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's an insight. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah, I always, you know, from my perspective, just as a because all I, I was just a pure player at that time, I, I didn't, you know, get to know people in the industry. I, I assumed they wanted um, a strong community because a rising tide lifts all boats. I had no idea it was because they were stressed. Multiple levels. Some of that. Some I mean, of there were multiple right. reasons, but just, yeah. you were, it wasn't altruism that kicked it all in. Though Ryan Dancy, is, the more I've interacted with him, I feel far stronger that he had our interest at heart when he did what he did. But, but he couldn't have got it done if they had the money to make their own stuff. I assure okay, you that. Fair enough. So th- was that before or after the great splat book? Flat book, yeah, that, bubble burst of whenever. Yeah, that was when they, when they TSR had to get know, sold. But it wasn't time. cheap to buy TSR, even if you're Wizards of the Coast. I mean, they had magic money, but magic money doesn't have everything. Not yeah. then. Well, let well, me they ask. Did, they, did, they did not have the creative talent, 100. percent Because if you look at their first, their first book, I mean, outside the core rule books, is what is Horde of the Dragon Queen, right? Is that was that it? Or, uh, so, that was I mean, one of the first ones. Steve Steve Winter and uh, Wolfgang Bauer wrote that book. Yeah, they couldn't. Well, even they, had gr- first, they had they had Green Ronin. House. The first few, right? Are you They're are you talking about Green Ronin? Are you talking about Green Ronin? Is no, the, oh, no, 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 no. It's uh, it's their. I, I I'm in, I, again. I'm in Florida. I don't have all my stuff here. Their their first campaign adventure book was written by a Tyranny of Dragons. Like, contractors. Of Dragons. Okay, because I know that Tyranny some of, of the there it is. Well, Tyranny of Dragons, your first campaign book, was written by Steve Winter and Wolfgang Bauer. It wasn't even written in-house because, like Zach said, they had no ability to do so. Well, I know that some of their first adventures after that were partnered up with Green Ronin Publishing. Yeah, that was the Prince of the Apocalypse was done with that. Chris Promise wrote that. Yeah, yes, so, Chris okay. It, anyway, so I want to ask Levi, uh, because all three of you are connected with the industry in a way that I'm not. Uh, so I, I vicariously am connected to the industry through people like you that I know. But Levi, do you agree that um, because I heard Zach give a very hearty yes when Bill said that uh, Wizards of the Coast was out of touch with its fan base, marketplace, community, you know, however you want to phrase it. Do you agree with that? Do you get that same sense out there? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think that you but, but you know, the, uh, having said that, OK, um, there's also different eras of, of D and D like right now, uh, the people who are playing D and D now, and I said the people, I mean the people, the new people, the, the, right. the kind of the, the, the younger generation who are, who are, you know, who are signing on to, to play. Um, they play it a diff- They're influenced by different things than we were. Um, and they play a different way than we do. Um, that's just the truth. That's 100% I mean, true. they're, they're influenced by things like anime you know, where that doesn't factor at all <laughs> into, into what influenced me to play D&D. Um, you know, and, and talking to my son, who's who's my oldest son, who's 22, um, I get the sense that, you know, he also influenced by different things than, the, 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 than what I came up on. So there's that component. But it's also true that, like, the best stuff that's coming out for D&D is all coming from third-party publishers, all of it. Um, there hasn't been a groundbreaking, like, top 20 all-time great in in all of 5e f- that came from Wizards of the Coast. There's not been one product that came out where you were just like, "Oh my god, this stands with the with the best of the best." Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, even though 5e for the most part has been a very strong addition and era for Wizards of the Coast. I agree. I'm kind of racking my brain. Like they have some fun Yawning in Portal was I kick ass. I, I mean, that- Yawning Portal was awesome because I used all the old stuff. Yeah, yeah, they well, converted yeah. 
converted old stuff to fifth edition. Yeah, I will say they did some stuff that was interesting, like out of the abyss and uh, oh, stuff listen, like that. I'm not saying they didn't do interesting things or that, yeah. that certain people don't like certain things. Of course, there's stuff in every edition yeah. that that people will find right. that people will love. But I'm telling you, like when you rack up the greatest RPG. Um, if, if yeah, if you did a top thirty, let's say, like what well, back in the day when when Dungeon did the top thirty adventures, if you did that, there wouldn't be one five E adventure in there. Uh, from Wizards, from Wizards of the, Co- yeah. of the Coast. Um, but there have been a lot of third party publishers, and especially for other games that kind of have have you know stand on the shoulders of, of Dungeons and Dragons as a whole. Um, that have made some really good modules, some really good games, some really good core books. There's some really great material that that's out there, but it's none of it's coming from Wizards of the Coast. Okay, so uh, I think that's a very good point, um, which ties into a lot of what Bill is theorizing. Exactly. I think, yeah. I think it's some very strong theories on Bill's part, um, and maybe he even has more inside info that he's not at liberty to share. But I, th- I think Bill's very on point with a lot of the stuff he's saying, and and all three of you, it's been interesting. This is why I wanted to do this. I like to talk to people and because I don't want to be in an echo chamber. I want to learn the real deal. Before today, I would have said this all came from like Hasbro down with Cynthia Williams as the connecting pipe. Um, you've all you've all kind of persuaded me that this was more uh, higher ups had a general idea of where they wanted to go. And then somewhere in Wizards was where the where the ham handedness came from. So that's that's been eye opening for me. And I trust all of your instincts on that because you're closer to it than I am. So. All right. So let's talk about. OK, so we got one point one, which was a new version of the OGL, which was not only much more restrictive uh, and nowhere near as good of an agreement, but they were claiming we're going to nuke the original one. It goes away. It goes bye-bye. So wh- one of the big questions, and I don't know if this ever got resolved legally or not. I have no idea that I had was, does that mean I can't publish anything moving forward under 1.0? So even if I created something 10 years ago with 1.0, am I still allowed to sell it? You know, we're very vague on that. Yeah, the first one, right? Um, yeah, the first, right. I think I think the, their impression was I think the impression they were handing out was no, they were they were cutting you off. I don't I don't think any judge in the country would have let that go. By the way, I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. Um, I think that tells you clar- who actually they clarified that. Definitely, I think that where that that's, that's going to go. At one point too, they did clarify that. But but you think it was in their wish list originally? Like, oh, we're just going to get rid of the whole thing. So even if, if you look at one point one, yeah. yeah, they were they were nuking <laughs> the industry. There's no question. <laughs> they wanted me to die broken, broken naked on the street. That's what they wanted. Zach. Well, Zach, I have to admit that just from a from a pure uh, shot and fruit perspective. If, if they would have done that to you for just one day, I would have come and videoed it. But I don't want that to happen to you for the rest of your life, Zach. I would let you so, video it for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew right. I need that for my crack. <laughs> okay. So, uh, all right. So, anyway. So, you had 1.1, which this thing leaked out, and everybody went ape crap. I mean, there was nobody uh, defending Wizards of the Coast. Not even there's, I mean, either people got totally quiet or they were trying to tar and feather Wizards of the Coast. There was no, I had people at my gaming table who have no connection to the industry whatsoever that were angry, that were conversant on the finer points of what was happening, were canceling their D&D Beyond accounts. I mean, you know, this wasn't just the creators backlashing. This was the entire. And, and I don't and, think they expected that. I honestly think that they thought they could get away with it. And I think the seven day uh, part yeah. where you sign this or else yeah. was a way to get it done before there could be interfered with. Right. Well, it, it was inside. I, 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 management, too. I, that's what I think. I, I'm actually pretty impressed because a lot of communities will say, well, we'll stand up to that. And then they stand up, but nothing really changes. I'm actually surprised at what the community was able to accomplish with wizards of the coast. So, cause usually corporations are and this, I think lends itself to the, uh, 
to the theory that Bill has and the rest of you have, this wasn't coming from the corporate level. This was coming from somewhere else because corporate level, when they, uh, what I usually observe is when they put out something unpopular and people scream, they just ignore it because this is, this is what they're going to do. I'd be really curious to know what day Cynthia, Cynthia Williams actually read about this because yeah. I have a feeling that this happened. And, I, and two days later, she finally heard about it because the kerfuffle just started. Right. And that, that, because it, that's really what I think. I don't think anybody's willing to risk the brand they have now that anybody who has a real stake here. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, the sad thing is, so there's, there's, there's more nuances to this story that the, the fairy tale version would be, they put 1.1 1. 1 out the fan base backlash. They said, Oh yeah, you know what? That's a bad idea. We're, we're good. We're not going to do that. In fact, we're going to give it to you. We're putting in the creative commons and all that, but instead they put out a statement on 1.1 1. 1, and said, oh, we're going to do like a survey and get the get the community's input and did it all this. But here's here's what upset me. What, what it ups it harshed my mellow. It upset my calm. Yeah, me too. I know. Where I know what you're going to say, but I'm sure it harshed my calm too. <laughs> yeah, it harshed my mellow. That their first ad, they went silent for a few days and then they finally said something. And the first thing they led with was like, oh, we're just doing this because to protect against hate speech. That was their first bullet point. And, and I'm like, that's such an obvious, they're trying to give themselves social media armor. Well, right? well, this is just about hate speech. And that made me really angry. I'm like, that's just not a genuine response. No, it's not. And the best part of this is the Wizards of the Coast, the one thing they succeed in doing, the one thing that they did that I thought nobody could do was Wizards of the Coast brought our hobby together. I saw people who, I mean, literally would never have one thing to do with each other, agreeing with each other that the ethics clause was a bunch of Who malarkey. Well, See, Dungeon Malarkey. That's what it was. Well, it was Dungeon yeah, Malarkey. Was, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so here's the thing. I saw that same thing. There's somebody whose politics are screamingly opposite of mine. And they said, oh, you're telling me if I object to 1.1, then I'm a bigot? They were that's mad. It. That's what and I saw. And I saw it on Twitter of all places where I normally don't even go. But there, there are people. They brought us together. They made us fans again. I mean, I didn't think it was possible. God bless them. <laughs> by, by the way, so that was – that's the – I was waiting for us to get back around. They're, they're, that, that whole morality clause that they pushed with the second version of their OGL announcement uh, and with the survey when they they, they – changed their mind on 1.0 a and they got rid of the royalty thing, but they, they, then they focused on that. That is another clear indicator that this, this thing did not get vetted anywhere where it was supposed to, because nobody in executive management in a corporation is going to put language like that in any sort of document or license or contract. It's just not done. It's just not done. You 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 have things like that in individual contracts with people. You do not have that in an open license or an open contract. It's it one it it, it forces Watsi to become a policeman of something they don't really want to police. So that means they have to hire an entire staff to do it. They have to now uh, rearrange their legal department to def to defend against this kind of. Look, corporations don't want to do that. No corporation wants to do that. You know who wants to do that? Idealists within a corporation. Right. There are people within Wizards of the yes. Coast. So this is again, and that, and then, and then, you know, literally, there's no, there's no mistaking the fact that five or six days later they start the survey. It's also, I'm telling you, is a combination of higher level executives, probably, definitely Wizards of the Coast, even maybe at Hasbro got into all this and got it all figured out and had their people telling them, here's what's going on. Here's where we're at. Here's where that. And they just said, hell no, this ends now. Because that I, I'm just, the people, you know, have used the phrase, I've used the phrase, the adults walked into the room and that was the end of it. Right. Because that sure whole morality clause, clause stuff was a morass that no corporation and, and they, they, even if they did it and the corporation wanted it and they got what they wanted and they're able to revoke licenses people they didn't like or opposed to, Elon Musk shows up in two years and buys Wizards of the Coast. All of a sudden, everybody who's really excited about you know censorship or we don't like this, like they may be the other side of it. And that's what a lot of people that I that 
the people that I like, don't agree politically to all, all that, right? And so yes, I can't. This is again, I I cannot imagine sitting in a room and someone bringing this idea up, and a bunch of people at, at higher level <laughs> executives and lawyers saying, "Oh, that's a great idea." I there is no way that happened. Plus, I think they're suing the only guy who who violated any kind of ethics clause. So right now, they're already they're already suing him. It already opens right. It, 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 exactly, it, it opens. They're not going to up here. All they did, you know, that morality clause. It's not stopping anyone. It's opening the door for wizards to get sued. It's just insane. Yeah, the the whole. Uh, I mean, and and there's been a morality or whatever you want to call it. It's not a morality. It's an idealism thing because not everybody shares the same morality um, within 5e wizards or whatever that has pushed some people away. Oh, well, sure. And and that's, again, that that's going to fall back on their creative department. I mean, they're right. the ones doing that. But it, look, I'm just looking at it from a pure standpoint of a licensing agreement. That there's just no freaking way that that was ever going to survive anything. Uh, it, there, it just, then, I mean, I don't know. I can go on and on about it. It's just, it's insane on, on multiple levels. Um, outside of what it actually was that that something like that would go into an open game license again it just points points fingers at that the people who were behind all this um are, are basically incompetent they're just incompetent so here's an interesting thing you guys might not even be aware of i was doing some research to get ready for today's discussion and on D beyond which it's interesting to me that all of the official communications on this came through D&D Beyond. I don't think I realized how all in Wizards was on D&D Beyond being their main D&D platform until all of the official communication. In fact, a lot of people saw this coming from D&D Beyond. Like D&D Beyond has a new OGL. Well, except um, for the fact that the D&D Beyond was a second statement. The guy who, Kyle, whoever that yeah, is. Kyle Brink. <laughs> I hate Kyle, Kyle's account was two hours old when he posted it. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I better, yeah. Well, that shows you they wanted the communications to come from D&D Beyond. So anyway, you know, there were two or three statements that they made on D&D Beyond during this time. And all of those, if you click on them now, forward to the most recent thing where they say, hey, we're putting it in creative. Co-. So you have to go find cached versions of their, their they didn't leave their official they want to, they want all of it. Yes. This needs to go away. This all needs to go away. Yeah. The thing where they said, oh, we got it wrong, but it was about hate speech first and foremost. And we're sorry. We didn't realize the impact we would have. Because you're all a bunch of bigots. That's what they told their, all of us publishers and fans. That's what that tells us. That they Not a very good look. So they Not came out with their, with their first statement, their first official statement, if I remember right, on January 18th after all this. Levi, what was your what did you feel when they finally spoke up? Because you said you were taking a I'm gonna kinda wait and see how this unfolds. So after waiting that long and they finally responded, what how did you feel about the response? Well, it initially relief for sure, you know, because it's nice to see them walk it back. Um well no, but, this isn't but, when they've walked it back. This is when they're like, Oh, let's explain why we did we what we did with one point one. They oh, haven't gone this, to one point two yet. No, I, I was I was high, high into uh into uh hey, it's a breakup mode, you know, like I'm 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 done. Um they I I was at the, the juxtaposition of hey, they either need to completely walk this back, uh, you know, back to where and, and issue a, a public apology and really work on fixing this. Um, or this is it, you know, this is, this is it completely it for me, you know, um, as far as like worrying about like past stuff that I'd done, you know, again, like Bill, all, all, but all, but all, you know, one, all except one of my products (laughs) has the OGL in it. So it's yeah. what was one of those deals where it's like, Oh, they, you know, if if this happens and it just nukes my, basically my entire well, the thing what? I focused on was I was really, I felt it was very disrespectful and disingenuous for them to say, oh, no, 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 this was all about making sure d and inclusive. All this other stuff was, we didn't mean for all Listen, this we all, stuff. Listen, we, we all know where the whole thing about inclusive came from. I mean, uh, it's it's a deal with Lanasa and um, you know, all those kind, all those Dave Johnson, all those guys who, who have put out that there's, kind there's, of... There's more bad actors than that, too. There's financial bad actors that... that Yes, but I I mean, I'm not, not going to be the guy to throw names out. There's people a lot more that did a lot more 
let's say, uh, value problems or image issues uh, to the broader indie audience than Justin Lanasa. He's in our little old school world, but in the in the regular 5e world, there's people out there too. Um, and, and you guys can probably figure out who I'm talking about. But So I, I want to go back real quick, though. I don't want to... Again, I, I, there, it's, there's a there's a real irony in the fact that so protecting your brand is a thing, okay, and it is important. They should protect their brand, but there's other remedies to do that than sticking it in the, an OGL where it, it's a it's a no win for your corporation. And again, just more evidence that the people who did this didn't know what the heck they were doing. Um, but there's a big irony here that. And trying in using the cover of hey we're just doing this to protect our brand and and make D and D inclusive blah 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 they did more damage to their brand than any but than just the NASA ever did and I don't even want to say that guy's name again it's a waste of our time but people like that could never do the damage that they just did to their own brand they yeah they shot did. themselves in the foot I mean they blew their whole foot off they didn't just shoot oh, themselves exactly in the foot, but, they absolutely yeah. did and it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a road for them. Well, and they're going to ask pray that this movie does a lot to assuage that. Yeah, to help their yeah, there were people starting to boycott the movie. They also, I, and I'll tell you, I believe I don't have, um, I don't have hard evidence of this, but I know that they're going for those recurring revenues. Uh, you know, they're wanting D and D Beyond subscriptions. People started canceling their D and D Beyond accounts left and right. Like a lot. I saw a lot of people. I, I don't even have a subscription. I just have a basic account. And I say cancel it. And it's it is a stone age process. I don't even know if my account is canceled yet. That's because they got got overwhelmed, is what I my understanding was their service got wrong. Zach might have a better idea. I mean, I I, I thought the number I last I heard was something like forty thousand subscriptions. There's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's I heard thirty thousand, so that's in line with that. Um but here's the thing. I wonder if that, and this is all supposition, we're just shooting from the hip here. I wonder if that's what really got the attention of the higher well, up. Well, I, I, look, again, co- corporations of that size are, they're, they are kind of slow mo- moving behemoths. They don't typically act very quickly. I think, um, I, I honestly, I mean, we, for us, it, it seemed like it was forever. It was only really only three weeks long. Um, I think by the time it reached the people it needed to reach, it just took that long for them to, you know, none of us are, it's hard for us to co- to comprehend this, but the people running Wizards of the Coast, a lot of them probably have zero understanding of what Dungeons and Dragons as a product and a community is actually like. They needed people to, right, they need people to bring and explain it to them. They needed to go out and see for themselves what was going on by getting online and, and all the rest of it. and Or turning on NPR. Yeah. And then the yeah, uh, and then someone says, "Hey, honey, you know they're they're at home having dinner. Hey, I heard about D and D on NPR tonight. Yeah, the OGL. Really? What is that? <laughs> yeah, and the guy's like, he stops, he's slurping his spinach yeah. and he just stops. It's like a record scratch. You're probably wondering how I got <laughs> right. here. Uh, right. So, um, well, let me ask this, and I'm going to let Levi go on this first because he's got to leave in a few minutes. Um, he's got a hard stop. Um, thanks for making the time to come, Levi. Uh, so if things had stayed in place under 1.1, right? If 1.2 hadn't come along and they hadn't done a reset, um, what would it have looked like? Had you decided what you were going to do moving forward? Uh, I had ideas of where I would go. Again, a lot of it was based on waiting and seeing, which is, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I did because I didn't make any rash decisions or I didn't make any public statements um, that I might later regret. So the idea, again, again, because I am more of a, a company who makes, at this time, makes support material. Like I support Dungeons and Dragons. I support Dungeon Crawl Classics and OSC and a lot of o, uh, OSR kind of properties. Um, the the products that I make, you know, we're we're really dependent on where the licenses were going to go for for other people. Like I have a I have a big affinity for the frogs, for instance. So if the frogs right. had come out with their own 
um, OGL of, of, of sorts, you know, we'll just, we'll just call it that, you know, uh, for convenience sake, then I would probably have fallen in line and, and made products uh, that would work for Frog God products. But I would do that for a lot of, um, of the, the companies and businesses that I, that, that I, I admire or just, just systems that I like. like. I like Castles and Crusades. I like OSC. I like Dungeon Crawl Classics. Um, but I mean, so to boil it down, you were, you were not going to move forward with 1.1. Oh, good lord, no, no. There's only a madman would sign would have signed <laughs> that you know, initial contract. Like that's uh, that's just that it, it was just crazy. I mean, all the stuff that they built into there that wasn't even necessary. Um, okay, was so just, so one point one was a non-starter for you. No, of course not. Okay. I was def- definitely not gonna not okay. gonna back that. And and here's another thing in this thing they put out on January thirteenth from uh, Kyle Brink. Uh, he he did clarify with a bullet statement, but this still didn't clarify everything. Said your OGL 1.0A content, well, nothing will impact any content you'll publish under OGL 1.0A. That will always be licensed under OGL 1.0A. But there was still a question of can you still keep selling it? Right? I mean, I still heard people going, What exactly does that mean? Like, yeah, it was created under 1.0. But what does that mean? You're telling me that 1.0 is being superseded. So no, nobody really ever got a clear answer on that. Yeah, like you're so, telling me that I can't retroactively sell things right. that I, I'd made before. Like, how ridiculous is that? Right. Like, and people had hey, a that question. Never, that never yeah. ever would have, would, have, would have held up in any court. Right. I, don't, I don't believe. But I mean, right. what do I know with law? But it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's it was just all so dirty. Yeah. And underhanded, and you know they made us a promise, and then they blatantly broke it. So yeah. why would you know? Even if all things considered, why would you want to stay? Right. Well, there was yeah. I heard people describe it as an abusive relationship if you stayed. Um, so and and then there was the the wrinkle that they were saying, oh no, this was just a draft. But then there were people like, no, we were shown this ahead of time, not as a draft, but as the new thing. And you were about to throw this out and say that we had seven days to sign it. So this wasn't a draft. Uh, is there any part of you that believes that was just a draft? Oh, absolutely not. Um, but, but again, you know, like we, we were talking, it all seems very ham-handed and it seems very amateurish. It's it does not well thought out, you know, like who, whoever, like, like, you know, much to the points that Bill made, like who, whoever was in charge of this, like whoever pulled the trigger on all this and was, was overseeing it, that they, they just, it was not the, it was not at the top level. This was middle management somewhere just saying, Hey, let me go make a name for myself. Let me, let me show them what I can do so I can, I can move up. It's just, I mean, I, I understand like the idea behind you know wanting to do some of the things they wanted to do, but just you know, you, you have you, you already had the OGL in place, man. You, you promised everybody the world, and we believed you, and we supported you, and we stuck through you through thick and thin. And for you to yank the rug out underneath us now is just shady and gross, and just altogether troubling, slimy, disgusting. So I know you got to run. Uh, any final thoughts? Like, what are you? Are you with? And we will get to this with Bill and Zach as we continue. But you know, end of the story is for the moment, and probably for the long term, they've capitulated and almost completely reversed course. We'll have they've not only reversed course, but they've released stuff into Creative Commons. Are, do you plan to continue as is? Or are you going to keep working with them? Well, for now. Um, but you know, I have, I have like four or five things that are already in the can. So, um, let's see where they go in the next couple months. Let's see what else emerges, you know, from all this chaos. Let's see what the frogs do. Let's see what Goodman does. Let's see what pace center does. I mean, who knows? Cobalt, all these guys, you never know where things are going to go. So I'm very, very open, especially after what I feel was just a huge betrayal to all the people who kept them afloat all, all these years. So, um, yeah, they definitely lost goodwill and trust, no matter what. Um, for at least this generation, there will be generations in the future that w- they won't even remember any of this. But for right now, they've lost so much trust. Yep, a hundred percent. Yep. Okay. Well, Levi, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, no worries, Bill. Keep, Zach, we'll see you guys later. Take care, Levi. All right. All right. Thanks, Shane. Uh, yep. Yep. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. All right. So I'm going to ask um, you guys the same thing I asked Levi. Uh, I'll start with Zach, then we'll come back to Bill. So Zach, from Frog God's perspective, 
not necessarily your personal perspective, but you can share that too if you want. But from Frog God's perspective, um, your lawyers, you know, uh, the, you and Bill and et cetera, uh, Bill, Bill Webb, right? Um, yeah. What, what was your plan for moving forward while sue the, sue the, the heck out of one was the play? Sue the heck out of them. All right. But well, I mean, was there, I, the first, I mean, I, I mean I'll, I'll give you the whole thing. The first couple of days, it was, we were stunned. And then we were angry. And then when we were angry and um, we had, I've talked to numerous, numerous attorneys, but uh, the, the, I think it came down to, this was a contract dispute. Mark Greenberg works with us and Ty Beardy works with us. Both of them were convinced that this was a contract problem and, you know, contract problems. The English common law is real old. Contracts are real old. We thought we had a reasonable chance to at least spend money to stay alive, to do what we were doing, or at least sell what we had. Cause we had $180,000 plus in product that's been in various stages of finish from we bought this manuscript to this thing is in layout to this is, you know, we're doing the conversions for all of our systems here. We have a lot of stuff that happens. You know, I wear a lot of hats every day to make sure we have all kinds of different stuff going out. We have stuff coming out of Savage Worlds. We have stuff coming out. We had a lot of stuff in process that we didn't know was going to happen with it. Like we had to go and look at the Savage Worlds like book. Is that under George Joe? We didn't know. Uh, we had no idea. Cause, and so, we had a lot of things to think about and a lot of things to do. And so we were angry we were going to sue them. But then as time went by, I'm like, well, this could be the kind of delta we needed. I mean, that's how I got to the point where I, I came to peace with it, where like everything has a chance where there's a flex point, right? There aren't many flex points for us. If we're going forward just using the OGL as we always were because it was never going to change, right? If, if, it, if the industry had stayed the same, we'd be producing the same books, selling to a lot of the same customers that we love. Right. But this is, was an opportunity, as I saw it, to keep myself from committing suicide in the center square with a katana. I saw it as an opportunity <laughs> for us to, to grow in different directions. Right. Look, we already have a lot of advantages. We have a warehouse. We have a good staff. We have great people work for us. We have wonderful customers. We had all the things there for us to do something. We just weren't quite sure what. Well, then Wolfgang Bauer makes an announcement out of nowhere for us where he's like, I want to make a black flag. It's going to be it's going to be like a five, even not quite. Well, that sounds pretty good. We have a good relationship with Wolfgang. We thought, well, that might be something. We're talking with the people at Paizo about the ORC license and how that's going to work. And well, we had a lot of options in front of us. None of them look good in the near term that would help the people who work for us right now. And a year from now, we would have been the same, been the same or better off if, if, if everything had gone through at 1.1. We'd be the same or better off, I think. But in the year in, in between, like I was thinking about buying a house with my wife, right? I mean, I had, we had plans based on this and it, you know, we had, we saw this as a contract they were violating. So, we were still litigious in mood, you know. It, we, we, it was um, it was going to change what we what we made, and what we made it for, um, how we actually the formats we released it on. I mean, we considered things like we don't you we're trying one this time, but there's a way in drive through RPG where you can only charge your customers, you know, your, your production costs, and they can go pay for the printing of the book you know, on POD. I mean, we were looking at options we weren't considering before because we want to make sure we could function. And pay the people with the pay because, like one of the girls that works for me, she's getting married in two weeks, right? Oh wow! And the kind of money that it wasn't a, it isn't tons of money, but it's the kind of money I think she was planning on using to make sure that you know they were going to be able to pick up their plane flight for, you know, their honeymoon. I mean, so this was real stuff we were concerned about. So we're trying to look at the fastest ways we could, without asking directly for money, which we didn't want to do. And people offered it, and God bless them, they did. Um, but. Uh, we were prepared to do a lot. And then when I got the last notice that this is kind of cleaning up, I, I didn't believe it at first because I was so PTSD by that point. But I didn't want to look at my phone. It was a Friday. I was in Seattle. I was in Seattle to talk to my boss and, uh, about how we would equitably break Frog Got Up if we had to with the shareholders who are paid for shares, right? We have, we're have we all shareholders and partners, that the people who uh, run Frog Got. And, well, you pay money to get in because it's a share. Well, how do we... How do we just going broke? Isn't how you handle so that. So let me let me be clear. You were in talks to potentially dissolve fraud. Well, no, fraud. I, was go, I was in Seattle with my boss to discuss what if the worst case scenario happened. What do we do? Right. Not that you were there yet, but no, we weren't even close to there yet. But that's yeah. what we were thinking. And then okay. I'm, I'm going to his house that night, and I get this. You know, next day, next night, but I get this notification on my phone from Eric Tenkar. Whom I love, but he keeps sending me stuff that's giving me heart attacks. So I wouldn't love it. <laughs> you know? 
Oh, I think he's lovable fuzzball. Yeah. But uh, no, but uh, I saw that. I couldn't even read it. I, I honestly believed it would be the same thing again. And then when I actually got up to courage 30 seconds later, because I quit smoking, which I almost started again. It was all I went on because I couldn't take it anymore. So I guess smoking or heroin, I couldn't pick. But that you picked uh, the wrong week to pick to give up sniffing glue. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I didn't want to look down. I looked down. I saw it. I'm like, nah. -uh. I had actually checked the tweet at the, I, when he sent me a picture of the tweet, like a screenshot. I actually had to go to Twitter and look him up and to verify that that indeed was a D&D &D Beyond tweet and wasn't some screenshot. And then when I found it, I called my boss and I could hear the champagne corpse popping and he didn't even <laughs> like champagne. Uh, <laughs> but it, it isn't that we, we this is not a victory for us. This is a, we survived. Right. We don't trust them. There are people right. there I love. There are guys that work at Wizards of the Coast that I absolutely think the world of. Um, but I don't trust the company in general because they could do this again. And it, yeah. And we have to be looking for other things. And right now, there are options coming up for us that I think are going to be good options. I think in the end, surprisingly, we're going to wind out of this better than we were. I, Bill and I are both in this whole bundle, and it's doing fantastic. It's going to be the biggest one we ever did, I bet, when it ends. Yeah, I, I think that if if anything – like uh, you and, and Levi were talking that you had to go explore other opportunities. We did, it's but not, you know what? Yeah. The amazing part was companies that I, we hadn't had a lot of interaction with for a long time. And it's, all the bad blood went away because we all had the same goal. And I've, I was on phone calls with people that I cannot name because I didn't ask their permission to say anything about it. But it were serious people from serious companies that were were on the on Zoom calls with them discussing where we're, how this guy here, where we're going. And look, these are companies we haven't gotten along with it because they're competitors for, you know, right. that's what it is. And, but we we all put those things aside because we actually cared about moving forward. Like, I know that Bill and I talked to a lot of the same people. We didn't talk directly to each other, but we were all the same phone calls. I bet we talked to all the same people and we all had, the same, you know, it, it didn't like I had to call because I knew he'd been talking to people I knew, <laughs> you know? And so, it was, but it's not a big industry, but we know each other. So it's not so big that I don't recognize other you know, people at my, in my position elsewhere. And okay. um, we, all that got put aside. Animosity got put aside. This is kind of the fandom in a way is that it healed the breach, right? Um, yeah. It caused, you know, Sauron emerge. And yeah, stand near the West. I mean, that's what it yeah. felt like. And, and our, yeah. Look, the D&D &D fan community at large, I discovered it's a much bigger place than I thought it was. And I thought I was, yeah. I had a good, I thought my hand in the pulse was pretty good for D&D. It's huge. Yeah. It's, in, it's in places I've never heard of. And we had a game on Sunday on TikTok. We don't have a TikTok account. That's crazy. But we met people who came through us and wanted to run games with us. They'd never heard of us before except through another company. And now we're running games on TikTok with people that I don't understand. They're way younger than me. Um, but they were fun and cool. And you know what? I've now met more people in our hobby that I like. People yeah. I normally would have – I hate to say it. I, I'll be honest. I would have ignored before because I – it just didn't seem like anything in common. But you know what? We do have yeah. something in common. I'm proud that they're on my team. I really yeah. am. And it, only Wizards could have done this. Only Nixon could go to China, right? Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. No, Wizards, like I said, they've shot themselves in the foot in more ways than one. They've created allies. They've lost. They've created allies against them. I mean, uh, they've, you know, uh, like I said, I have I saw people with completely, because politics has really affected Everything. Gaming a, a lot of ways in the past yeah. few years. And I saw people on the opposite sides of political ideologies, you know, firming up like, you know, forget you, Wizbro. So, all right. Um, so I'm going to kick it over to Bill. Uh, so Bill from Pace Setters. Now we're going to get the capitation, the, capiti the, the capitulation is coming. It's on, you know, look to the dawn or on the third day or whatever. But, um, so Gandalf will come running in on Shadow Facts. But until then, you're still in the darkness. The orbs, the orcs are attacking Helm's Deep. And uh you're you're still operating under 1.1 if you operate with them at all. So what was Pace Setter's feelings about moving forward under 1.1? So I, I'm gonna echo a lot of what Zach said, and I'll, I'll try not to get repetitive. Um well, I didn't talk to Zach, I did talk to Bill Webb. He called me a few days in. Um because we've had a great relationship with with all the guys over at Frog God Games. I mean, I know Zach says we're competitors. We are all competitors, but we're also a lot of us are friends. Uh, and Frog God's one of the companies we've always we've worked with them on on, on things before. So 
Um, it was great to actually hear from people because it felt like you were on an island when this initially happened, right? I mean, you're like, okay, what are we going to do? And, I, you know, so one of the – it kind of hit us in a, in a weird way also. Um, we actually, at the end of last year, started talking with other uh, game publishers about, right, you know, putting out products for their games, which, oddly enough, are not 1.0A. So we – in a way, we felt a little okay, <laughs> um, but we also want to produce for D and D because that's what we do. That's our that's our biggest thing. So you know, after the initial confusion, you know, in talking to different people and et cetera, we again we we decided that we were just going to we we're going to continue to publish and see what happened. We like Zach said, we're. We didn't have $180,000 and stuff out there, you know, but we had probably, I don't know, we're right right now for this year, we're probably 30, 40, 50 grand, somewhere in there in, in money I sunk into projects for Kickstarter this year. Hey, right, Zach? You're higher than that because we didn't think we were as high as we were until we looked into it. We probably are. We, and again, I, I let Ben handle all that. So I, I'm going to say conservatively, we're in the 40 to probably $50,000 range of stuff we've got. In the works for this year, we got stuff that we're working on two years from now that are all, you know, that we're using that document. So um, that puts, uh, you know, it makes you think a lot. So I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did in, in the end. Um, you know, we have uh, a very large uh, a game we're putting out. We're putting out Gamma X coming out this year, which was going to use 1.0A, you know, at the time. Yeah, and we were like, oh, my God. Now what do we do? This is our are going to be one of our biggest projects we've ever done, and, awesome and now we're like, oh my god, we got to start changing core mechanics or this or that. And this is a thing that's launching in about three months. It's a lot done. <laughs> so um, we have a a five e supplement. It's launching on Kickstarter for I think February seventeenth. That book is done. Almost all the art is done. In, in, there's a lot of money in that product. Um, so, you know, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. So, you know, moving forward, I guess, um, we also did talk to, again, I know uh, Zach mentioned Cabal and, and Paizo, and we talked to both of them also. So um, moving forward, um, you know, we're going to look really hard at, at both those things, the ORC license. I mean, for now, we're going to continue under 1.0A. For the foreseeable future. I mean, that's just where we're at. Um, it works for us. It does what it needs to do. I, I don't have any fear in the short term of Watsi doing anything, but they burned a bridge for the most part. I mean, there's a toothpick maybe holding that thing together right, right now. Right. It's shaky. So, the trust is shaky. Yeah. It, the yeah. trust issue is, is almost non existent because, again, it happened once. You never say never, right? So, um, so we're going to look at that option. We're definitely going to look. Uh, we've talked to Cabold about Black Flag, and we're uh, we're very interested in that. And you know that could be a direction we go in. Again, we've uh, we've got our own game system coming out with Gamma X, and um, I mentioned earlier we put out the, the 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 BX RPG five years ago. Well, that's that's coming up for a you know basically a a revision or a reprint or an update, and that's going to be renamed even the dungeon x and i don't think i've said that publicly anywhere yet oh um, wow i have now. that out or is that a scoop that's, I'm yeah. Yeah. Ben, get a scoop I'm ben to kick hell on you yeah so that's <laughs> that's uh that's coming that was our our plan honestly for 2024 uh that was going to be our big new game system launch you know gamma x is this year and then dungeon x is next year uh to coincide with the 50th anniversary of dnd so that's still going to happen <laughs> But how we do that now might change a bit. I'm, I again, so a lot of this is still going to be. There's still a lot of wait and see involved in this, especially with the newer stuff coming yeah, along. Like the SRD uh, somehow that's handled and everything else is in the Creative Commons. But how is that going to work with yeah. the license? I, yeah, no, it, it, it is. I, no. I have a lot of things I think they are, but I don't want to say anything to any of them. But yeah, Bill's exactly. right. The most is important for sure. And we don't use a whole hell of a lot out of the SRD. To be fair, yeah, right we, just, we don't. So anyway, that's. That's where we're at looking forward. So we're really interested in see see what happens to Orc license. We're really interested in in moving forward to Black Flag. Um, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop producing for D and D five point oh. Um, we we I don't see us just stopping at cold turkey. You know, it's just going to become another edition of D and D that people publish for. Honestly, that's probably where it's going to go. And we'll we will probably continue supporting that. We've got 
Other things in the works, you know, um, Matt Finch um, with Myth Mirror is redo, probably redoing Swords and Wizardry here. So we've got some connection with that um, as far as, you know, putting out product line for that. Uh, we're probably going to go back to doing something with DCC. We did it. We've done that in the past. Uh, and then other stuff I don't want to talk about just because it's not, sure. we don't have a. Well, we I just love I got the scoop on Dungeon X. Well, Dungeon X, you got the scoop. Yeah. I so it's. It's so, a, it's a, it'll be a much larger effort than the BX was. And I'm not, I'm not trying to undermine our own product. BX is great. We love it. It's got a great following. Uh, it really does. Uh, but it was the first system we ever put out on our own. And we learned a lot. And we've got a lot of great feedback from people, too. So, Well, let me ask you this. And I want to I ask it to both of you. And the, the great capitulation is coming. It's on the horizon. But we don't know that yet. We're still pre-January 27th, right? Yeah. And one thing that I'm fuzzy on, I'm pretty good on the timeline and the specifics of what was going on with the different versions of the OGL and and how Wizard was acting and the community response. What I'm not clear on, I know that, like you said, the, you had the Paizo led license. I think it's called the Orc license. You had a couple other options. So it's not January 27th yet. Okay. You don't know that Wizards is capitulating. I love saying that they capitulated. Uh, what? How interesting were these alternative gaming licenses? It sounds like, I mean, like Black Flag. I've heard mentioned more than once. That sounds like it was pretty interesting. Um, that's an SRD and not a license. I mean, it's- is it okay? So what was that's what I'm, I'm. I don't have a good handle on these alternative uh, yeah. licenses, and so, so like when I heard, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not in the industry real. I'm very tangentially connected to the industry. I'm much more of a hobbyist. Yeah, lucky you. When, when I heard that uh, Paizo was leading the way on a new license, I guess, my initial reaction was like, no, no more companies creating a license. I'm sure it could be written in a way that it was protected and open, but I'd rather see a consortium of well, creators sort of come together. That up, but at the time, before January 27th, um, we were in talks with them and with attorneys, et cetera, and their attorney, um, his firm, th- that is going to hold that license. So it's not Paizo that owns it. It is basically for everybody. And it's a license and not an SRD. So you can use that license for Pathfinder 2. You can use that license for Black Flag. Well, I don't understand. What is it giving you the license to then? What? what? Well, you license to use that SR- an SRD. And the thing is, yeah. they would hold those SRDs. And... Now, because of the creative comments that has happened, I'm not sure how that's going to go exactly, but I do know that the, the plan before then was, the, I think the Black Flag SRD, and Wolfgang could have corrected me, but was going to go to the same people who have the Orc license. So once you give it, you're donating it, okay? And so it would be going to this law firm that would be, and they set up a charity, like a 5013C3, and... Th- Changes can only happen with a board of directors. And what we were doing at that point was trying to make sure that we had, like Bill and I would have somebody that represented us on that board. And that's the kind of stuff that we were worried about then. And I don't know what's going on with it now. I think that the urgency to get it done is gone, but I hope that 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 doesn't stay that way because I'd like to see that work license. Yeah, I'd rather see a license that's not. And I think it will. Uh, Frankly, I I can't say how I know, but I'm sure Bill's heard the same thing. Um, It's going along just fine. And the people behind it, I didn't think that I was worried our best that there would be an ethics clause in their license because uh, Paizo has been particularly they're, they're an activist company that you know what hey, it's their company they can do what they want. I mean that's how I feel. I mean I, we Frog we, we have an official uh, we don't we do games and that's how we try to do it and we don't we have a lot of customers a lot of different opinions and we don't want to be involved. Paizo has a different attitude towards it and they yeah. were nervous but they are committed. Committed. I heard this from the highest levels that they're not going to do that on that license. Okay, that, that's what I've heard. But we haven't signed anything. We're not doing anything to see more, and it's going to be a few weeks at least. I think. I do agree with Zach. It's still coming. It's coming. I, I, they, they've already put money into it. It's it's going to happen. Um, and the same thing with Cobalt Press. I mean, they they just made an announcement in the last few days, right? Oh, Cobalt's um, doing their own CSR. Doing their own SRD. No SRD, they're not not SRD. SRD. Yeah, they're the not doing an OGL. Yeah. You use SRD. Cobalt is an SRD. Orc is a license. So you use the Orc yes. license. Licensing lets you allow to use the Black Flag SRD or the Pathfinder right. 2 SRD, which is why they do it this way. So yes. based on what you knew at the time, right? 
to try to put yourself back in those days before you knew how this was all going to turn out. What do you think the likelihood of Pace Setter and Frog God moving over to that work license would have been? I don't know because I haven't seen it. Honestly, yeah, that's, that's how I would say. But we were leaning towards that. I think just because we needed we needed anything yes. in look any port in the storm, man. Um, right. Uh, we yeah. uh, I mean this is this was serious stuff, and I tried to stay lighthearted as much as I could, but I couldn't. It, this is serious stuff, and they were messing with it in a big way. So we need to find something. But it wasn't just us that were in trouble. Pathfinder is a bigger company, both Bill and I combined, plus more. And they have the same problem, but they have a office and a warehouse. And they, I mean, they have fixed expenses that I have at Bill's house, Webb's house. And Bill Webb's house is paid for by Bill Webb. So I was okay with that, that part of it, right? Pazzo didn't have those options. And Pazzo is really the only one, I think, yeah, maybe Chaosium and uh, Pinnacle, but. Paizo is the only one I think that it was really uniquely threatened by this in a way that they had to hurry up and fix. So at some point, they went from the 1.1 to the 1.2. What was the difference between 1.1 and 1.2? That's where they dropped the revenue and all that? They dropped dropped all the financial stuff, the royalties, and they dropped – uh, they dropped that they were going to um, revoke 1.0a. So that, mining, that kind of stuff. You could do those things again. Yeah, they, 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 those are the big things. Really, the only thing that carried over were people's hair was, you know, their hair was on fire now over a different thing was the morality clause. I mean, right. honestly, 1.1, if you read it, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's not really that bad. But except for them, you, you take the morality thing involved with it, it's a, it's, it's a dumpster fire. You take that out of it, it's probably fine. But, uh, well, except for the fact they were trying to nuke. 1.0, right? I mean, no, no. So you could still publish. So no. So yeah, it, it nuked 1.0a, but you could still continue to sell everything. It made it clear that if you published anything under 1.0a, you could continue to publish it and sell it. But you, you could. That was an immediate concern of ours. So we have a whole warehouse full of stuff. Well, the, you know, the other big thing they dumped was the uh, we can steal all your intellectual property without without taking care of. You. Oh, yeah. That, that yeah we forgot thing. to mention that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah we can grab sure anything out of there. We want. So, OK, so 1.2 came along. It still wasn't enough to satisfy the community, the creators. I'm not saying it should have been. I'm just saying it wasn't. So they did a survey. Right. Um yeah. And feel free to interject if I'm missing anything. I'm trying to kind of give the broad strokes of the timeline. So they did 1.2. And I think at the same time, they said, we're going to start a survey. If yes. I remember correctly. Look, okay. They, they launched 1.2. And then they, they the next day or the day, within two days, the survey was, you could you could take a survey on what you thought of it. And, and it didn't matter. The, look, the cats were out of the bag at this point. I mean, the people were done and, and they got, what was it? 90% agreement of wizards. Just, you know, you need to shut up and go home. It's essentially what their survey results were. Yeah, and that yeah. was, and well, honestly, what's surprising is they actually released that to us because this survey was supposed to go for two weeks. It went yeah, for six full days. Yeah. <laughs> six days. They shut it down because again, I'm just, again, this is me putting my, I, I, I may or may not have been in the room, which I know, I, of course I was not. But I could, I can feel like I was in the room. The adults walked into the room and shut it down. It literally was, yeah. you know, my, as my son Ben would say, "Pooh Bear Fun Time is over." Okay, um, we're we're moving on. So, and that was the end of it. And like Zach said, we we let out a sigh of relief. But look, this is this is going to have lingering effects. We're all doing things probably differently uh, over the next year. Moving. Uh, our products possibly in different directions, at least the ones we're planning for out two or three years from now. I mean, there's some things that we just can't change. I mean, we're, and we're not going to, uh, we'd be crazy to attempt to, to change stuff that we've already poured a ton of money into just because our, our, you know, we're, we're upset about things. Um, but I, 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 the community came together, the community set its peace. And uh, I think what we all need to remember is try and keep that momentum going as best we can. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. I mean, that's all great way to look at it. Uh, you know, just move forward, be an adult, move forward, do your best um, with the situation, which which turned out pretty well, 
considering, but, but it, ne it, it never needed to get to a point where it needed to turn the out. The Almighty right. himself could have come down and said he's going to fix it, and I wouldn't have believed it got fixed as well as it did, at least yeah, temporarily. They, they, you know, when I will say this, when they capitulated, they capitulated. So, uh, well, that's how serious you know they were up at. Yeah. If it, I think I bet it got to Hasbro at that point, but if it didn't, that was Ms. Uh, Ms. Williams, yeah. who I now like again. Um, <laughs> But I, 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 I blamed her like everybody else in the beginning, but I don't think it's her fault. I actually think she's the one who may have been instrumental in saving this. Okay, fair enough. I, uh, I really it was certainly someone at that. It was certainly someone up at those levels, and and yeah. I can tell you right now is they also reached out to um, outside counsel and an outside PR firm. Oh, I'm um, sure they did. Yeah, I mean this was and, a no, and I it, the the alacrity of how that moved to me is astounding because big corporations like that. Never move that quickly. Alacrity is a good word too. I like that. Yeah, that's I know you played D and D, Bill. Yeah. I read a lot of Gary Gygax back in the day. I know Alac with yeah. alacrity. So <laughs> this ageocracy is crazy now. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me share. Okay. So on January twenty seventh, uh, which was a Friday, the Great Capitulation came, and they D and D Beyond. I'll have this linked at the show notes on shameplays.com. But D and D Beyond, they have a page. OGL 1.0A and Creative Commons. That's the name of it. But on January 27th, um, so they had this survey open for six days. They got 15,000 responses. I know Alex Kammer said he was giving them more than they probably cared to read. Um, Alex has a legal background. I know that's true. Yeah. Alex is. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Alex is. <laughs> uh, he does Game Hole Con. He does some publishing within the. Uh, industry cool guy. He's also a lawyer. So uh, here's some results after fifteen thousand surveys in six days. Eighty eight percent. I call this the. Remember, Mad Magazine always used to have the from the whatever department. I call this the G. Do you think department? Eighty eight percent do not want to publish. Uh, no, that's like a Cuban election. Yeah. Uh, Under you know, OGL TTRPG content. Ninety percent. You can't yeah. like get nine out of 10 people to agree on anything. Yeah, 88% okay? said we don't want to use 1.2. Not 1.1, the supposedly better one. We don't want to use it. 90% want to change some aspect of their business to accommodate OGL 1.2. Gee, do you think? 89% are dissatisfied with the authorizing 1.0A. 86% are dissatisfied with the draft v the virtual tabletop policy, basically. And 62% are satisfied with including the SRD, Systems Restaurant Document, in Creative Commons. So they said the feedback is in such high volume and its direction is so plain that we're acting now, uh, which is a euphemism for the adults walked in and said, fix this, as, as Bill keeps pointing out, I think. Uh, so that's the great capitulation. Um, in some ways, for the moment, things are better than they were because of the SRD going into Creative Commons. Uh, does anybody want to explain? I, I feel like maybe Bill could explain better than I can the significance of the SRD now going into Creative Commons. So, do either of you want to tackle that? Bill can do it. Okay, I'm not going to be very good at it because it's, I, I'm not very fluent with Creative Commons. Okay, uh, I, I know my understanding from listening to other people who are more fluent in it. Yeah, um, it, it's it's just a more of a wide open, free playing field. Um, they don't Creative Commons doesn't have uh, they have a it's license. Not but it's copyrighted. not like right. It, it, it's uh, yes. Yeah, so there's, there's there's what I can say is is that the the council that we talked to who looked at it um, suggested that we stick with 1.0a for the at least for the time being only because 1.0a gives us a little bit for our again I'm talking all that I'm not giving anyone advice here. This is pay setter games only. Um, this is pay setter games only. Our decision is to stick with 1.0a because of the protections it affords, uh, what we can convey in it to other people to use works better. It just, our stuff is set up for it. And that's where we're at. And we're okay with that. Um, that does not mean there's anything wrong with Creative Commons. I'm sure a lot of people are going to go to it. Um, it just, for us and for our business model right now, 
Um, I, I can only speak to 1.0a, so I, I can't really tell you a whole lot about Creative Commons because we're not really looking at it, to be honest right. with you. Well, so. some people call it copyleft instead of copyright. It's, sure, it's sure. basically I, it's I, not under copyright, but there's a license that yes. says you can use this. Um, right. And look, that, that doesn't mean we love using 1.0a, right? I mean, but um, from purely, again, a business standpoint, is it, it works for us. It well, really, it's at it's this point, doesn't quantity. have anything to do with it. It has yeah. virtually nothing to do with Wizards of Coast anymore at this point, so um, they're not they're not going to go back and touch it in in right. the time frame that we're still going to be using it. So for us, it's a, it, all of us. I think it's again, it's, this is a win for the community by the community. And uh, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd say great. this is an unequivocal win. Usually, you say, oh, oh it's a yeah, you oh, it's a mixed bag. They get no. This is an unequivocal uh, retreat. On Wizards of the Coast side and Hasbro's even. Um, I just, yeah, th this was this was literally unconditional surrender. Yeah, which well, is not only did they surrender, they made a gift. They said, "I, I, I cannot, I, yeah, I cannot express enough the uniqueness of this um, in a corporate setting. This this does not happen. It just right. does. Yeah, no, it's it's it it astounded me. It really did. So. Uh, it is, it's it, it, it's kind of interesting, right? The the solution or the the end of this was honestly as surprising as the beginning of it. Yeah, it's it ended it's, with an it began with an explosion. It ended with one. It's it's absolutely uh, a an unexpected and it's one of those things that people will be talking about for a while. I remember when they did a wizard strike. I can tell you right now that, that a bunch of us at the next convention we go to, will be sitting around talking about. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'll dominate. <laughs> so. uh, well, I imagine when we go to North Texas RPG con in June or late May, though, it'll, it'll be a big topic. It's just, it's, still, it probably it's, still it's, it's, it's a huge shock to the, they jiggled the membrane in a big way. So, all right, so let's wrap it up. Um, what what is Frog Gods? Are y'all just are you going to continue with 1.0 a for the time being? You may. I'm not going to say the whole thing. It's basically what Bill said. Uh, we're in the same boat. Uh, yeah. We're looking at some of the other releases coming up, but until we have some more firm, yeah. I, first of all, I'll be honest with you, we're a little bit ragged right now. For I, I imagine, yeah, you're shell shocked, and yeah. so we're we're letting people who you know who do this for a living, lawyers and stuff, take a look at, it, and then we'll get back to it, and we'll talk to some of the other industry people, but. Fundamentally, we're not changing anything right now, except we, you know, like I said, we were and things we already planned to look, look, six editions coming out. We didn't expect to be in their garden. We just didn't. Right. And the fact that uh, uh, that's why we got a Savage Rules license. Right. It was because we wanted to look at other options and we were already doing that the kind of slow way. We're working with OSD because they're they're doing a really great job. They blew up and we're looking at all these options for us for, you know, releasing games because we knew something was coming. This wasn't it. Right. But because of what happened. I'm doing exactly what you, know, you can't see where a video of actually Bill laughing at me. No, but uh, I think he's laughing with me. No, he's but, laughing uh, with you. No, he's mocking you. It's, that's yeah, that's okay. I, I deserve it. Yeah. No, but uh, in all honesty, like we're just recovering from this and making our plans. Like yeah. I got back from Seattle on Tuesday. Yeah. And uh, I was in Seattle to, like I said, I was, we were looking at the worst case scenario stuff and it turned out that's not what we were doing at all. <laughs> well, I'm actually really glad that it took us, a couple of weeks to put this uh, sort of power panel together, or what you know, round table together, because we got to talk about the situation as a whole. If we would recorded yeah. last week or whatever, you know, the the great capitulation wouldn't have happened. I couldn't yet, have followed so. your family family guidelines, your family show guidelines. Yeah, last I week. would have been doing a lot of bleeping. Yeah, you would have. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have meant to do it, but I couldn't have helped myself. Yeah, you would have had no choice but to to. Uh, I have no children and no community near me except my wife, and she's working. So you would people. have had to lambast Wizards of the Coast. So let's look at a couple of the. Let's end on a positive note. Let's look at a couple yeah. of good things that have happened. One, the community has come together. Uh, you know, and it won't it won't stay this together. Just human no, nature, it, but new relationships happen. have been forged. Um. And I think the community sees itself more as a community now, especially the the creator community. Um, we also, uh, like you said, that humble bundle that they threw out uh, with with all of the you know kind of third party publishers in it. It's doing Which extremely. Still going on. You can you you two can join in. The eight hundred dollars and stuff. You two can get yours. Yep. Uh, great humble bundle. Um, uh, Goodman Games. 
I'll link this on the show notes at shameplays.com. Goodman Games shared. Uh, Goodman Games is Dungeon Call Classics, among other things. Uh, they're well-known third-party publisher. They shared that January was the best sales month they've ever had. Yeah, so I that's can share that here too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, was it the same for Frog God? It was absolutely the same for Frog God. And they were our customers were very, very good to us. And we didn't we didn't yeah. expect them to step up. We're, I can't tell you how happy Am we were. I can't yeah. tell you the people who work for me who, who relied on money to pay their car payment. Right. I can't tell you how happy they were too. The kind of stuff that happened from all this support is going to make sure the people who work for me keep working for me all year. Okay. I mean, it, it, we are not, we are in better shape now than we were six weeks ago, but for three weeks, it looked like we were out. I mean, so it's been, um, I don't want to do it again. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't blame you. That's scary. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that it has turned out positively for you. Cause that's scary. So Bill, did you see, have you do you even have the numbers yet for January for Paysetter? Do you know how things? Work? Don't I know we had a we had a like everybody else I think we had a really large uptick. Uh, our our customer base or fan base, um, yeah, Stepped great up. people. You know they they've always supported Paysetter. It's hard for us to tell is because we've kind of transitioned a, a lot of our legacy products. We put them out of print last year because we're doing new stuff with all of it. So we you know it's hard for us to say it was our best month just because our availability of product was. A lot smaller, but I, I can absolutely tell you we we, we tore it up on drive through and we uh, you know I I know I know Ben was busy I, I know well, that's amazing busy. I've been down here in Florida so I'm not I can't tell you what exactly what's going on with, with our our existing product or our inventory stuff I know we're gonna I know we're reordering a ton because that's good it's just we have to that that time of the year anyway so uh, so there's that's a silver lining uh, all sure. the, the community yep. really showed support. Um, and that, that's, they're showing support to you, but they're also sticking up a finger at wizards, right? So it's both, uh, they prefer you. They're saying, no, we want you. <laughs> we, we don't want to mess with all this. We want you guys. We like you guys. Um, yeah, us guys and streamers and VTTs and all these right. industries that are around this, they aren't huge industries, but they matter a lot if you're in them. Trust me. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. Like you said, it was an existential threat. Um, it was. And and then we got, you know, stuff like literally we got a lot of stuff put into Creative Commons, the SRD. That's a big deal. That's that with all of the happen. OGL stuff going on. I don't I don't people really aren't focusing on that in the public chatter a lot, but that's a big deal. That's a peace so offering. That's from, giving up your that's giving up uh, your milk cow. That's right? the, that's a peace offering from Yeah, yeah, that was. And that shows you how serious it became because look, my my first thought originally was, well, Hasbro is doing this because Hasbro's biggest problem they had before with customers was the fact that everybody, hey, they took the dog out of Monopoly, right? Right. That was my thought was that, hey, they just don't understand the fan base. They understood it way better than people at Wizards did because I think yeah. they fixed it fast. That's, that's my take. I, I agree. I agree 100%. And I, I think what's going to happen, too, uh, is is none of – we've talked about Watsi for the last 30 days. I don't think any of us going to want to talk about them for the next year. Um, yeah. I'm, so I'm going to give you all I got to Shane right now, then I have to be done because I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm you know I've, I'm I'm sick of hearing the name too, and I, I didn't dislike them before. I was like kind of neutral on no. them, but now I, I'm like, ah, I, I, I liked them I, fine I, because they let me do what I was doing, and they were yeah. they although they legally had to, I was fine with them because you know what, they let us be, they left us alone, which is all I ever asked from them. Yeah, a, a, a thriving Watsy producing, um. Movies and material is good for everybody. Okay, I, I'm the same way. I'm not. A, I'm not just a Watsy hater. I mean, just look. I, I the, the whatever they did here, the people uh, heads are going to roll. I mean, it's just I. I don't know how. I, I'll try to be delicate. I, There's going to be a red but, wedding. But they're, 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 yeah, there people are not going to. It's not going to end well for some people in in corporate level Watsy at whatever level. But and honestly, I mean, it is what it is. But you know, I want them to succeed because if they're doing well. You're doing well, right? We, we, you know, it, it, yes, it does. Yeah, it does no, they help. are the they are the bellwether of the. Sure. They help create the industry that we have today. I mean, there's no right. getting around that. Yeah. Um. You know, it's just uh, the, the building the popularity of D and D five E to what it is. Um. Is, is something that is is. Yeah. Lovable. No, they did a good job with fifth edition. I mean, they. It, you know, I just don't know where they're right. Yeah. The, the problem is, is, is they took the next step forward and they landed in a pile yeah. of dog. Yeah, they, roll, they rolled. They rolled a. Yeah, they rolled a one. Yeah, so, they rolled a one. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I appreciate the, anything, you know, the opportunity to talk about it, Shane. It was oh, great. absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you guys came on. I want to give a quick shout out. Steve Chenault from Troll Lord Games had wanted to join us. Uh, and just like he went, they had a uh, family, not bad family stuff, but good family stuff that he needed to be available for. Like today, you know, a lot of people don't know Troll Lord prints its own stuff for the most part. They were having a new printer delivered today, so he couldn't. Um, you know, be available. He's a but, scoundrel. Stop being nice about him. What's that? He's a scoundrel. Uh, no, uh, I, we, love, we, we love Steve Chenault. And I, I, it, he would have an interesting perspective because of he, had, he has a rule system that is really not close, but tied with it. All of his books are tied to. Well, what, would, he's, what I wanted to mention with him, and one of the reasons it would have been interesting to have him on, one, Troll Lord was, is like Frog God. They were one of the first people to pick up the OGL 20 years ago and say, hey, we're going to we're going to do something big with this. Uh, but two, they announced early on, just within a few days before, I think one point, uh, before Wizards even really made any statements in defense, yeah. they said, we're done. We're scrubbing the OGL and all that out of all of our products. We're rewriting all of them. And I think they've even been giving away some of their 5e stuff for free to get the inventory out. So they took a very quick and firm stance and i'm assuming i would have loved to ask steve but i'm assuming that they're not turning back on that i think they're dis disassociating themselves from the ogl ogl in any form or fashion even the 1.0 but i that's i'd want to confirm that with steve but that's definitely what it sounded that's like that's my understanding but that's once yeah. again that's not from steve right. but that's my understanding too all right well i'm gonna let you know. we've been talking for a while thanks so much for your time this has been an important and fascinating topic now i don't know um if you listen to Shane plays, you know that I usually finish each episode with a bad joke of the week. So here we go. And I picked this one out in honor of Wizards of the Coast. So Wizards of the Coast, this one's for you. All right. Did you hear about the new book called How to Survive Falling Down a Staircase? It's a step-by-step -step guide. There you go. Yeah. That's that's the bad joke of the week. <laughs> I could say Wizards of the Coast is the bad joke of the week, but since they did capitulate, I won't say yeah. that. But I'll yeah. say they they fell down the stairs. Well, so. I want to thank you for letting me on to talk about this. I didn't think, in my life, I never thought I would talk about the OGL to anyone except for like Bill Bush. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't something that came up very often before, except for amongst us. How do you, you know, how do you feel at the last part of the, of the Section 15? You know, that was an interior stuff that no one cared about. Everybody cared a lot. And if you're listening to this and you've never heard of us, check us out. But uh, if you have heard of us, thank you. Thank you very much. My wife thanks you. I thank you. The little dog I'm watching thanks you. Everybody gets to eat thanks you. And I'm not, that's not an overstatement. But, I mean, it's a big deal to us. And thank you very much from the bottom of my heart to everybody who supported us. And everybody at Tabletop, don't care where you come from. You came forward for me. And I just I think I find you like a brother and a sister. Wow. And everything else. So thank you. That's amazing. Um, that's that's when you hear stuff like that's definitely one of the cool parts of being in this hobby. So, what about you, Bill? Any closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I want to thank you for having me on. And again, I want to I want to thank the community at large. Uh, whether whether you know about Payset or don't know about Payset, it doesn't it doesn't matter because everyone came together. Uh, that said, now you get now you've heard our name, so check us out. Um, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up this year. Uh, we do go to conventions, so I, I know we can talk about that at all, really, on this, but. Um, that the community and that you, you, it even becomes tighter when you go to some conventions and we're all, I know I can speak for Zach, every, everybody's approachable in this industry. And, uh, and we love talking to you because we love these games. Yeah. Do we, do we have a business doing this? We do, but we love, we do what we do this because we love it. Um, yeah, if I, if it's, it's as a capitalist, I feel bad, but if this, if making money was the most important thing for me for this, this isn't a career I would have picked. I love this career more than anything, but I get to keep it because of the people who actually support Dungeons and Dragons as a hobby. And I thank all of them. Very good. Those are good closing thoughts. We'll thank both of you for coming on. Uh, I know we already thanked Levi earlier, but Levi Combs from Planet X Games joined us for a good portion of this podcast. Thank you, Levi. Uh, guys, I I'm glad for you that it's at the point where it is, where you can move forward without, you know, the sort of Damocles hanging over you. At least I guess it's not hanging over you at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I didn't have so. to cry on your podcast. If you had last week, <laughs> I might have to cry on your podcast. <laughs> well, I'm glad we didn't. I'm glad uh, we didn't have <laughs> Zach.
Pryable Podcast. I'll have you both back on. Uh, want to talk about Frog God more. Want to talk about Pace Setter. Uh, Zach, I want to talk with you about retro computers and retro gaming. So we will definitely make that happen in the future. Thanks again, guys, and everybody else. We will catch you next time on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Thanks so much for listening to Shane Plays Geek Talk. I certainly hope you enjoyed this journey into the things we love. For your convenience, show notes with helpful links for each episode can always be found at shaneplays.com. You can catch the podcast in several places, including on the blog at shaneplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, Amazon Music, Verbal, YouTube, and more. If you like what you hear and would like to support Shane Plays Geek Talk, you can do so for as little as $1 per episode on Patreon at patreon.com slash shameplays. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Stay geeky, my friends.